Holy is your name, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is your name. Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to you. Come feel and overflow our lives right now. Come feel me, Lord, say. Come feel me, Lord. I'll take a drink. I'll take that water of life. Let your rivers flow, O oh God. Let your rivers flow through me. Hallelujah. Flow out, mighty river. Flow out from my heart. Flow out, mighty river. Flow out from my heart. There's a dry and thirsty land. In San Diego. There's a dry and thirsty land. In this nation. Float of me. me. Oh, mighty God. Float of me. Set the captives free. Float of me. me, that the life of Jesus might be seen. That the of Jesus might be seen. Mighty river, mighty river of God. Flow out of me. Hallelujah. I'm, I mean, you can be seated. I'm so looking. You can just have a seat. I'm just so looking forward to the things that um, that the Lord is doing and, and, and that He's purposed and planned to do. As soon as the first of the year is finished, we are going to start the school of the Spirit. The Scripture says that the Holy Ghost has come to teach us all things. And the Word of God causes us to understand that if you're led by the Spirit, then you're the sons of God. And if there's anything people need to do is they need to get in to the school of the Spirit and learn how to do the things that Christ Jesus has commissioned us to do. He has all authority in heaven and earth and he's just looking for somebody to cooperate with them, someone to believe that and then begin to move in the faith of it. And we're going to see, we're going to see a large number of people. There are 3.2 million people just in this surrounding area. You're going to see 3.2 million people begin to be impacted by the power of God. Because, there are people that, because there's going to be a greater uh, dedication uh, for people to be Again, to participate with that which the Holy Ghost is doing and step into the school of the Spirit. If you, if Samuel was alive, you'd think, my, I'd love to go over to school, Samuel's school of the prophets. But the Holy Ghost is here 
And he's far greater than Samuel, and he's inviting us to come and to his school and be taught of him. He's the great teacher and mentor. He's the great guide and leader. Praise God. And I'm, we're getting ready to, right after the first of the year as well, we'll be starting School of Music. And um, in that, we're just going to, we're going to just teach and empower people to learn how to flow in a greater demonstration of the Holy Ghost in, in worship, in music. That is psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. You know... The Lord has entrusted these things to us and we can help folks and help them to understand how easy it is to step over into that realm where the Holy Ghost begins to sing through you and praise through you. And then so we're just going to participate with God in that and let Him do it. Right now we're planning on having uh, the School of the Spirit is going to be on Friday nights after the first of the year. And then the School of uh, Music, School of Worship is going to be on Saturday nights. And a lot of what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to allow people who've been uh, giving themselves to music and who've been being trained in music to get up and, and worship. And we're going to worship along with them, everybody that wants to come. And, and we're just going to let the Lord unfold that. And it's going to just go as long as uh, there are people up singing and worshiping and people can come and participate as long as they want to. And the Lord's going to do some... The Lord's going to do some marvelous things through it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I learned how to prophesy and speak by the Spirit, singing and worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. I learned how to hear from God in the place of prayer and, and praise. And we, we want to entrust that to everybody else. That you get as excited as we've gotten because Christ Jesus becomes real to you. We're going to help you understand how to deal with opposing demon spirits. That hinder you. The people don't recognize. They just think it's themselves. They think it's because they got a bad thought. And they got a, you know, they got some problem going on inside. Some circumstances life. It's just demon spirit. Try to stop you from prayer. Try to stop you from praise. Try to shut down that voice upon the earth. That we've been given by the power of God. When he gave us the beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. You know what? If you're in ashes, it means you need to get saved. Uh, if you're in beauty, it means you're saved. Uh, if you have the oil of joy, it means you're saved. If you have the spirit of heaviness, it means you're not. Huh? You got the garment of praise, it means you're right with God. Huh? If you don't have the garment of praise, you got the spirit of heaviness, it means that you're not. Or, or, or you are, but somehow you abdicate it. So are we going to help people? We want to help people. I think one of the most important things in terms of walking in the school of the spirit is learning how to just simply... Do what the Holy Ghost is doing all the time. And if you just learn how to do what he's doing, his fruits and his gifts always merge together. They're always a package. And if you just learn how to do that, uh, you find yourself continually increasing and growing and maturing. Too many people give most of their life or a lot of their life or even any portion of their life to doing things other than the Holy Ghost is doing. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's wrong, walking the wrong way. It's yielding your members to the wrong things. You're not going to grow and mature in the signs and wonders and miracles, the heavenly realm of God's goodness, living in this life, living in this godliness, living in everything that pertains unto every good and perfect thing that God has given. So long as you've been entertained or drawn away or distracted with other things. Who wants to walk after your own imagination? Who wants to walk after your own bad feeling? Who wants to walk after your own ins inspiration? Who wants to walk after the things that this earth could, uh, could um, give you or motivate you to do or, or inspire you to do? Not me. I've been born in the Spirit, got a glimpse of Jesus... And, and heaven is the only realm that I want. And I know that's the only realm that you want too. Yes. And we want to help you to understand how glorious it is, how wonderful it is. Could you imagine that you could actually live in joy unspeakable and full of glory all the time? Could you imagine that? We want to help you with that. That's what a school of spirits is going to be about. The fact that it is going to be what school of worship and, 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 and music is about. Because, you know, worship music and, my goodness, it's about praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, the Lord Jesus said that uh, the Father is looking for those who would 
worship him in spirit and truth. And until Jesus came, it was impossible for anyone to know the Father. Father was hidden away. Man was separated from the Father. Man could not approach unto the Father God. Father sent Jesus Christ, who was the eternal word, as the captain of our salvation. He was the rock that followed them in the wilderness. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, they all drank from that spiritual rock, Christ Jesus. He's the rock that was there in the wilderness that we saw Moses smite the rock and water came out to give life to the people. Well, Christ Jesus, that rock, was smitten at Calvary. He was the word of God then. He was known as the captain of God's salvation. He's the eternal God, but that was his, that was his place as the eternal word at that time. He became flesh one day when suddenly there appeared with the angel a great host in heaven singing and praising God. That's what they do all the time anyway. Saying, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill towards man. Today in the city of David is born Christ the Lord. Born for you as Savior it is Christ Jesus the Lord. You know, the Father was hidden away. He was hidden away. He anointed one priest to come in and stand before him, but he had to, before he could come and stand before him, the place had to be filled up with smoke, lest he die. Father was hidden away. <laughs> but then he sent Christ Jesus, who came and said, To see me is to see the Father. Every miracle Jesus ever did, he saw the Father do that miracle. Every act of love that he described, he was revealing the love of the Father. The point that it came, he says to Philip, Philip, if I've been so long with you that you haven't seen the Father. Showing everything that belongs to the glory and the majesty and the goodness and the love of Almighty God. And here you and I are here today to be in the, a part of that great company. To not be different, but to be one with Him. To, 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 to receive all these wonderful good things that are only supplied by the Holy Ghost. And too many people have chose another way. They chose to live another way. They have the Bible before them day in, day out. It's a Bible that says love your neighbor as yourself, but they don't do it. They have a Bible before them that says love your enemies and bless those that persecute you, but they don't do it. They have a Bible before them that says concerning the brethren, love one another even as I have loved you, that they don't do it. They don't give themselves to it. So many things we can go on and describe how the God told us to build up ourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God. But people don't do it. They're busy. <laughs> so we would call all of God's people into a place of not being busy anymore. It's time for revival to come. It's time for a great outpouring of God to pour forth upon the earth. I have read in the scripture and understand by wisdom that God has given that this is the day that God wants to pour out his great signs and wonders. These are the days that he wants to show forth these works and greater works. And just as Daniel, who understood by the scripture that it was time for revival to come to Israel as he read the, the prophecies of Jeremiah, even so today I see that these are the last times. I see that these are the last hours. I see that this is a day that the fire of the living God should fall upon the church like never before in the history of man. Now, at this time, so we're going to stir the people of God up. Hallelujah. And stir you up. Hallelujah. <laughs> My, and it doesn't matter what you're doing for God. Do it with all your heart. There's no small thing in God. I love the story of one of the great evangelists, one of the great men of God in this hour. How he came to know Jesus was a wonderful thing. Because an assemblies of God missionary was a stumbling around. He basically hadn't accomplished much with his life. He gave his life to being a missionary in, in Europe. And he was at the time in Eastern Europe, in Eastern Germany, rather. And he got lost in the woods. Poor missionary. And then he stumbled into a little small town. And he wasn't upset. And he wasn't all disappointed and discouraged. Because he, what came out of his mouth, according to the record, was, is there anybody in this town that needs to be healed? Uh, to come into East, a town in the woods of East Germany and prove Jesus to a bunch of people who are more mental than they should be. They said, yeah, the bunky house. They, there's, there's terrible sickness over there. Hallelujah. He went over and prayed for Grandpa Bonky. 
And God instantaneously healed him. And then his son became a preacher. And he never had a big church. It was a small church. It was a small church of desperate people, of hungry people, of people who were pressing in. You cannot tell me that the prayers of that church, you cannot tell me that the prayers of that, those saints, though they be few, the cries that they lifted up, when they cried out to God, oh God, use us. Oh God, do those things that you promised to do in your word. Shake this earth, shake the nations. Oh God, send us into the harvest. You can't tell me that they did not result in the great moving of God that was ultimately demonstrated through Reinhard Bonnke's life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You never know. You know, we go liberally sowing the seed and then some seed falls upon stony ground and sometimes it or, or wayside ground. Sometimes it feels like way too much of the seed that we sow is hard and wayside ground. And you get to get a real big indicator of that, you know. And then, you know, you see it seems like it's stony ground because it doesn't seem like people stay in, in the meeting. They don't seem like they stay in the church. seems like they get, they get distracted, you know, and they're going to go soon back to the things that God delivered them out of. But, you know, the reality of it is there is good ground. And there's a lot of people who really want to come to know Jesus. And as soon as the announcement of that wonderful good news comes to their ears, huh? their life's going to be transformed by the power of God. So, I mean, I'm, listen, we're, we're, we've set our hearts... That we, right now, God's given us this miracle facility. We started praying for it 13 years ago. We, we were on the uh, Naval Training Center. The Lord had given us an opportunity to do some great things. And, you know, I remember one day, and it was uh, in the year 2000, and Carlos Anacon, he had just been here, and, and we had a great time. And I was, I was thinking some, some, some things were going to happen then that the Lord had showed me. God's got a different, God's got a different time scale than we do. Hallelujah. I hit everything he shows us and all the visions should sure, surely come to pass. Amen. Okay, but I mean, it's, a, it's sometimes a different time scale. We just need people know how to, who know how to continually pray and fast. Huh? We just need to know, we, we need to get a hold of some people who are willing to seek God with all their heart and all their soul and all their spirit. Crying now, it's a day of rain. And when you begin to cry for the rain, in the time of rain, rain's going to come. We just need people to begin to join, us with, join with us in that. But at any rate, you know, the Lord spoke to me one day and I walked into a whole room of, of pastors and, and they were, you know, a bunch of different ideas and of what God was going to do in the year 2000. And we, the Lord had brought us to a place where we were meeting with more than 160 pastors and just amazing things that was happening that the Lord empowered us and gifted us to, to do at the time. And I walked in and I said to them, I said, it's over. And they all looked at me like, it's over? What do you mean it's over? I said, well, no, this phase is over. And I'm just telling you, I, you, I came to you five years ago and I said, There's, God's doing something, come join me, and the power of God touched you, and you came, we did these things together. But I'm just telling you, the same, the Lord, told, same Lord that told me to go and to sound this trumpet, do these things, just told me it's over for now. Huh? A lot of times what we do is we continue to go on in something that God meant only as preparatory, only for a season. And we, we make some kind of, we, we take it a step further and then, and then it just becomes uh, a movement of man. But we're just so hungry to be a part of this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the Father's purpose for these last days. Hallelujah. These are the glorious days. I mean, you know, the Lord, there's two point right now in our generation. Forget about other generations. Somebody said, well, the gospel's gone throughout all the lands sometime in the past. Well, listen, look, this ain't sometime in the past. This is now. Hallelujah. This is now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God wants everybody to be able to have an opportunity, not just somebody's great, 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 great grandpa. Are you listening to me? Maybe their great, 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 great grandpa heard in Azerbaijan. You know, but that don't make any difference today. Are you with me? Yeah. So there's 2.6 billion people never heard the gospel. And I know what God's going to do to reach 2.6 billion people. That is going to be one glorious, mighty, sweeping move of the Spirit. And I purpose to be right in the middle of it. And so we've learned how to make our petitions known to the Lord. And it doesn't matter what comes, hell or high water. You know what? It doesn't matter. 
doesn't matter what persecution, doesn't matter what God needs to do to prep or prepare us. He's going to put, he's going to, he's going, he's going to pour out his fire upon anything that he is going to use. He's going to pour out his fire on it. He's going to break you. He's going to, he's going to melt you. He's going to mold you. He's going to fill you so he can use you. Amen. And people, fire comes, people don't like it. People don't want to come into the assignments that God has given. They live in a, we live in a modern age. There's so many people. They just want to have it their way. They want to do it their way. Okay? But God says, no, I want to teach you to do it my way because your way won't work. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He says, I want all the nations of the earth to come to your glory. They'll come to your glory. I'm telling you, the nations of the earth will come to your glory. That's what he says. They'll lay hold on you. We're supposed to be making disciples out of nations. Well, Isaiah said, the nations will come to your glory. They will lay hold on you. But what are you going to have to do? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name. Let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. The unrighteous man, his ways. Ha, there are the wicked his ways. Are you with me? He said, the Lord is here to instruct us how to do it his way. And, and that's why we're going to do these things. And, and we're getting ready. You know, praise God, we, we're here in this hall. I love the big ceiling. I mean, it gives me a little bit more open space up there, you know. I, 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 and, uh, but we're moving across the parking lot. And across the parking lot, we've got enough room to ultimately build a sanctuary seat about 2,500 people. And uh, you don't know who's already signed up to come over there. But everybody, just about everybody you thought of that could do something if they came, they on the docket. They on the docket over there. It's true. I said, just wait, just wait. Give us a little bit of time. My goodness, you know. Hey, you people think, well, you know, the place got to be filled up. Filled up with what? In order for the Lord to be able to use it. Filled up with what? If it's filled up with a bunch of Holy Ghost people hungry and desperate for God, then yeah, God use it. Huh? But, 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 but come on now. The Lord doesn't care if he saves by many or by few. Hallelujah. In fact, if it is, the many, many, the many many times can't get it together on anything. They can't agree. They're not willing to go with God's way. They're going to get sorted out. It's not hard to get sorted out. Just come listen to me preach a couple sermons. <laughs> and you'll find out how deep that love goes. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Hallelujah. You'll find out how deep that willingness to hear the Word of God goes. Yes, you will. Because I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. I'm not going to preach these things that are not the, what the Bible clearly describes to us. I'm going to stay right with the main points. I'm not going to get on the minor points. I'm going to stay on the main points. I'm talking to you about the way you love your husband, your wife. I'm talking about how you honor Christ Jesus and serve the church. I'm talking to you about how you keep the kingdom of God first. I'm talking to you about sin that you allow in your life and how it's not supposed to be there. I'm talking to you about how you're led by the Spirit, how you sow to the Spirit, because God's not going to be mocked. I'm going to warn you night and day. I'm going to stir you up, putting you in remembrance of these things. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord, look here, look here. 13 years ago, we, 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 we felt that the Lord told us that we would move off of the Naval Training Center with all that property that we had there and that we would move on to this property. And I'm telling you, man, when we moved off the Naval Training Center, we went to the Hilton Hotel. And I'm like, on my way to the Hilton. Look, we just, we've been having meetings where many, many weeks out of the month, there'll be more than 1,500, 2,000 people in the meeting as all these different ministries gathered together. And, you know, the, all these things that the Lord had told me and these great, this great outpouring of the Spirit of God and this great coming, bringing in of the harvest. And I'm like, Lord, I'm on my way to the Hilton. We're driving down the road. I'm going, Lord, my goodness, what is it? I mean, please. <laughs> Lord, Jesus, what? You know, <laughs> do we need to be humbled that much more? What? And then I started saying, okay, Lord, whatever, whatever, I'm fine, whatever. You know, just, just as long as you're with me. And I walked into the hills to deal, man. I tell you, the power of God came on me with such it, um, the, one of the most amazing encounters with the Spirit of the living God I ever had. One of the most amazing, overwhelming anointing of God that I've ever experienced. And I said, Lord... If it's going to be like this at the Hilton, I never want to leave the Hilton. I am here to stay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it wasn't long after that, the Lord gave us a, a former college over there in, uh, in uh, Mission Gorge. And once again, you know, God brought, a, brought in so many, so many things, opened up so many doors. We went to the Middle East. 
We went to China. We became part of the board of Back to Jerusalem. Just incredible company of people came around us from different parts of the earth. I mean, just, just the Lord setting us up. It's just kind of like baiting us. I'm one of, one friend, friend of mine came in who's, who's just a great evangelist. God's brought millions of souls uh, through his ministry and great signs and wonders. And we were sitting, we had, the, we had the, the green room or what, you know, the ready room. It was right behind the platform at Mission Gorge. Some of you know that, especially in the music ministry. And we were sitting back there and I think, um, I don't know who it was. I think that, uh, I think it might have been John singing somebody. And uh, he was sitting there going, what is going on in this place? I said, what's up? He said, I, I never felt the fire of God like this. I never felt the presence. What's going on in this place? And I'm just sitting there smiling real big. You know, I say nothing. I just, just listen to him. Because <laughs> I felt that glorious presence of Jesus too. He's with us. He's accompanying us. Hallelujah. Ha. And every year we knocked on this door trying to get this property. And it was like, you know, you know, I think it's gone from, you know, from the range of 9 million to 18 million bucks. Or 5 million to the 18 million bucks. And no one knows, you know, all, all the various different things that went down with that. And all the stuff that convoluted that. And all the hindrances and all things county and everybody else wants to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just kept knocking. Hallelujah. We kept asking. I'm going to tell you why. Because, see, the Lord said, I swear to an oath that whatever you ask the Father in my name, yeah. he'll do it. Sure. See? See, I swear with an oath. Or amen, amen, or verily, verily, however you want to say it. <laughs> that, hallelujah. I swear with an oath. Harabakatogana <laughs> say. I swear with an oath. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. And so... You know, we got the said the property right down the road. I'm just like, you know, I know, Lord, this isn't everything that you want, but it truly, I know you, he did it. And then he supplied us with a miracle finances to make it happen. And then we got back from Nepal and, and after 2008. And the Spirit of the Lord just showed me this great move this, uh, of his... Uh, 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 of God, this great move of the Spirit that would come to the United States of America. And I said, Lord, this isn't the large, large place you told me you was going to sit me in. I said, I'm cramped. I don't have any elbow room here. You know? I said, I don't feel large right now. <laughs> and, and so I wanted rid of the building because really, you know, this is, the, this is the property we had in mind and we thought, well, you know, the Lord had used that and we had many people sharing the vision with us at the time. We knew that God was you know, had all the provision that we needed. We're looking to men, but we had some people who had, you know, quite a bit of, of wealth and ability to help out there. But bottom line, I just said, well, you know, that could be a great uh, uh, media, film and media place. And then we just move over to the property as soon as the Lord opens the door. And then the long story short is we, we you know, the Lord laid on our hearts to sell the property and, and worked out a miracle for us to do that and owe no man anything. And be totally even. Where's Rob? S-C-F-O. Totally even. Oh, no man anything. Praise God, huh? Amen. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. That's a three and a half million dollar property that went belly up 50% loss around here in most properties. You listen. Praise God. I mean, I tell you right now. If you don't see all the miracles, I, come talk to me. I'll, just, I'll go through the list. I'll go through the list with you. Hey, somebody said I wasn't supposed to be in the ministry. My goodness, God would take me out of the ministry at any moment in time. I, I walk on the water. I'm so far out on the water, I can't see the shore. <laughs> you know, I don't even know about a shore anymore. Are you listening to me? And so, you know, that's ridiculous. I'm not supposed to be in the ministry. Man, I tell you, when God's called you to the ministry, you can't get out of it. Huh? You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just live in a miracle realm. God's training us to walk in miracles, signs and wonders. He's training us. To live in the miracle provision. That's what he's training us to do. He's training us to, to speak on his behalf with all power and authority. And, and he's training us. He's given us these great experiences so in him so that we know it's actually going to happen. You know, um, A.A. A. Allen, they used to bring A.A. A. Allen, all the, all the people that, would, that needed to be healed. And he would pray over the cards before he ever went in the meeting. And he had gotten into, a, he walked a relationship with the Lord. He knew he was going to get healed before he ever went into the meeting. He had this one pile. You go through the cards, you know, and then you all of a sudden put a card over here. That one's going to get healed. And so you could easily, boldly walk out there and say, tonight the blind are going to see because God already told them the blind was going to see. 
Huh? I'd already told them that, that mentally insane people were going to be cured. And so what happens is, as we walk with the Lord in the Spirit, He develops us in a personal relationship to know how to function with Him, to know how to flow in, in the things that He has supplied to us in, in terms of the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we put that as soon as they told us that we had a date that we had to move out over there, We've been banging on this door, and it has been brass. Nobody answers our telephone calls, and nobody knows who to talk to if they do. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Huh? And sometimes banging on it more than a dozen times in a single year. I mean, I told, I told Geneva, I said, 2009, I said, get over there, get on that property, call them. She said, oh, I called, can't get on them. Call some more people, man. You'll find somebody. Go down to the county, do a search on the thing. Then said the same, same thing, and she's just always been such... A great help, you know, because, you know, if I tell her, if I ask her to do something, she'd just do it. You know, she's just going to make it happen. I don't have to wonder. And it's been such a blessing to have that. And then all of a sudden, you know, after so much intensity, um, then we, go, we, 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 we get, you know, so much effort, nothing. What do you do with so much effort, nothing? Give up? No. Well, well, well just take an inventory of your life. Because many times we do. Many times we do. But, but if we realize that God has sworn to us with an oath, I promise you, whatever you ask the Father, my name, I'll do it. Then you don't give up. Then you keep speaking. Yeah. I mean, every great thing we've ever seen in God, we had to say, go and tell him again. Go and ask him again. Go tell him again. Go ask him again. Go ask him again. Go tell him again. Go, thank you, Jesus. Go ask him again. Go tell him. Praise your holy name. Go ask him again. Go, and then that's the, that's the sign. Oh, in, in, in 2006, we went to the nation of Nepal, and the Lord did such miracles through our life that we had never experienced before, on a scale that we had never experienced before. And then the people, the ministries there, they started to petition us, please come back, please come back. I said, I will, God told me not to come back to your nation until the, the kingdom of Hinduism bowed to the word of the Lord, and they gave give us a national stadium. And everybody said, well, you're probably never coming back then because it ain't ever going to happen. There's no way. And they went again and again and again and again. Ask again. Ask again. Tell them again. Tell them again. We want to have a, we want to have a mass evangelism crusade and preach Jesus in your nation. Go tell the king who is a Hindu, a nation that is run by Hinduism. Go tell them again. Tell them again. Christ Jesus has need of your national state, of your icon for the kingdom of Hinduism. It was there in that situation that then God set the miracle up. That's how he does it. He sets up miracles for us. He does. He's an amazing God how he does that. Huh? So as soon as, hallelujah, as soon as that happened, and now the Maoists are selling us, they're going to kill us, and they're going to kill everybody that's with us. And, and then, you know, the guy who's the oldest missionary there, was he was the chairman of the board, and he said, oh, you know, I've got to resign from the board because we're concerned that this is going to be a grandiose failure. This thing seats 30,000. You put another 20,000, 15 to 20,000 down on the, on the, on the, uh, on the grounds, and it's going to, there's, there can't be more than 5,000 people get there, and this is stuff that, that going on telling me even more when I got to the place, and I just sit there, and just, I sit there and smile and talk about all that Christ Jesus has done. I see, I believe, I believe that God has sworn an oath that whatever I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will do it. Amen. That's what I believe. I said, you wait, you watch. We got to the place that is packed with people. And there's buses coming with people. There's so many people crammed inside the bus. There was no head space room. They were crammed in there. They were hanging off. They were completely covering the roof. They were hanging off of the windows, off of every side. And there was bus after bus after bus after public transportation coming into this place, filling this place up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The miracles of Christ Jesus. I mean, I, I, when... when he put the property on for sale and, you know, it, there, was no, there was no definition of where we're going. But see, we serve him with total abandonment. It's total detachment from all our own self-interest because it ain't about me, man. I've got to do nothing. I've got to prove nothing. It's about him. It's his kingdom. It's not, somebody said, how about the bills? Not my department. I'm not in the finance department. 
That finance department belongs to Papa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not my department. Well, you said they're going to be, the blind will see, the deaf will hear. Yeah, because that's my department. I'm supposed to announce it, but it's his department to make it happen. Well, so I said, what if it don't happen? Well, it ain't my fault. It ain't my department. It's his department. You got a problem, you have to blame him because he's the one who told me right here in his word, go do it. Praise God. I mean, I love valiant men and women. They love God to teach them to be valiant because all that is meaningful to them and real to them is what God says in his word. I'm telling you, politics can't come in. The doctrine of the Herodians cannot come in. I'm telling you, Phariseeism, religion, cannot come in. But those people that humble themselves before the presence of the living God and as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word and learn how to live by the word of God, I'm telling you, they'll do everything God ever said and declared in his word. It happened. Two of the great men of the 20th century, T.L. Osborne and Vincent Idaho, stood on a platform one night in a nation, and they told the nation, and I'm telling you, Vincent Idaho from Nigeria, there was probably, God took him head and shoulders above T.L. Osborne. If you've never heard of Vincent Idaho and what God did through his life, you ought to look it up. Great man of God. And, and, and he and, him and T.L. had been running different directions for many years, and their fame was, you know, significant at the time in the nation that they were at. And they said on the first night, Christ Jesus is the same yesterday, the day, forever. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the cripple will walk, the dead will be raised to life again. And not one single person got anything, not even a headache was cured. Nothing happened. Second night, they stood in the same place and said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the cripple will walk. Devils will go from people. Every disease will be cured and the dead be raised to life again. Not one thing happened. Nobody got healed of anything. Nothing. There was no one who could even say that they had a little pain in their back and it was healed. No one even had a little pain or tweak in their neck. It was healed. Nothing. Tenth night. Still nothing has happened. Night three, night four, night five, night six, night seven, night eight, night nine, night ninth, night, night ten. Nothing has happened. Still valiantly the word of God has not changed. Still he's the same yesterday, today and forever. It has nothing to do with what's going on. God has promised and he cannot lie. They said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's here. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the cripple will walk, the diseased will be cleansed, devils will go out of those who are possessed by them, the dead will be raised to life again. Nothing happened. Eleventh night. Now we're going to start changing it. Well, you know, sometimes what happens is we come into these certain situations where there's demonic hindrances and uh, we're going to have to deal with some this and that and the other thing. Huh? We're making it up now. Huh? We're not, we just changed the word. Huh? We're just making it up. We're making it up. You with me? We're changing the word. Huh? We're making it up. It ain't working like we think it's supposed to work. So we, now we're going to start going on this speculation discovery. And we're going to start speaking out of our own mouth and invalidate ourselves and shut down the word. Mm -hmm. They got up as valiant men of God that they were. They said tonight, Jesus Christ is here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the cripple will walk, the disease will be cured. Devils will go out of those that are tormented by them. The dead will be raised to life again. And they saw more miracles that night. Everybody in the place. There was more miracles in a single crusade than ever had taken place in any of their lives. So Papa has the right to try you and me. He has the right to say, okay, what is it that you say you believe about me, huh? How, what did you say, my word? How does my word have place in your life? You say, you do, you say you'll do me. Whatever I say for you to do, you'll follow me wherever I tell you to go. You speak only my word. You won't alter to it, alter it, won't add to it, take from it. It's where we stand. Father, forgive us if ever there's been a time that we've diluted your word or brought forth explanations for the things that we did not understand. Hallelujah. 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 You know, what I'd really like to do tonight, I'm kind of between two things. I'm going to talk to you about confidence in Christ Jesus. But what I would really like to do 
for you tonight is begin to minister to you on a new book that I'm writing. And this book is all about the miracles of Jesus. I've taken every miracle of Jesus in the gospel and I've outlined every miracle of Jesus in the gospel and categorized them in the different places. Hallelujah. And watched how the spirit of the living God moved on Jesus as he watched the Father show him yet another miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I, I, I have a hard time writing because I just sit there and I read the verses of Scripture over and over again and I get so overwhelmed with the glory and the power of God. I, I, I just, there's nothing to do but fall on your face and begin to worship Him, you know. There's nothing to do but just walk around in the glory, just stand in the anointing. Praise God. Father, thank you for your power. Listen, you know, the world is a very big place. Some people think that there's no room for them to labor. No, 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 no. It's a very big place. We were just, Ann and I were just in the largest city in the world. Tokyo, Japan. 28 million people. There, there's only 2,000 churches and the average size of the churches are 30 people. It is the most unreached people group on the face of the earth and it's a free society. My goodness, there's so much to do in the kingdom of God. I mean, nation after nation after nation after nation. And there's so many opportunities to reach the folks. You don't need a big budget. All you need is a big God. Amen. Hallelujah. But I see it happening right here and I see it happening right here. I see it happening right here. Hallelujah. 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 We saw, we saw some amazing things. We saw some amazing things in the nation of Japan. The Lord gave us a special anointing, a special authority and grace for the nation of Japan. We were in South Korea and a woman who runs Christ for the Nations Korea who basically integrated in the leadership of that nation. I mean, the Lord joined our hearts together and she, she went with us to Japan. God gave us a special grace to do things in Japan. And while it was going on, I'm saying, Lord, how about San Diego? How about California? How about my nation? How about my nation? You know, uh, as soon as we knew the date that we were supposed to move out of the building across the street over there, they called us up and said, are you interested in this property? We said, yeah, we are. They said, well, it's in escrow, and it's for sure that it's going to sell, but we'll, and there's a backup offer, but we'll put you on the menu. <laughs> we'll put you on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So I was just going down the road, and I just whispered to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me that property, and I'll shake this city. Amen. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. I said, Papa, give me that property, I'll shake the city. Give me that property, and I'll step into a mantle and anointing that I know you're willing to give to anybody, and I'll shake this region. When dear friend Rodney prophesied 12 years ago, Mark, in a public setting, said, Mark, God's going to give you that property 12 years ago. See, we think, we, 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 get, we, get, we get stuck in timelines, John. We think it's going to, because God talks to us in pro, in, 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 on prophetic terms and declarations, and we think, well, it's going to happen next year. It's going to happen the year after that. No, 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 no. He's got another timeline. It's going to work out just like he said. He's going to work out just like you asked, you see. It's going to take place. You just can't weary. You can't weary. The vision, though it tarries, surely come to pass. If you don't weary and well doing, you shall get it. You shall reap. I'm going to tell you right now. But watch out because some things can come along and invalidate it. You can get yourself into an agreement with the powers of darkness and they'll try to steal and kill and rob you of everything God purposed for you. I've watched many people come and go. There was an assignment upon their life. For the greatness, this end time greatness. There was an assignment upon their life to reach the masses. To have a place in the kingdom of God among those who stand around his presence. Stand around his throne. Because of the spirit of offense. Because of various different things. Persecution. They went away. God's going to have his boast. He's going to raise up his people. If you leave, God brings somebody to take your place. 
If I leave, God will bring somebody to take my place. I'm not moving. Amen. I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. You can scream, you can holler, the devil can do whatever he wants to do. Somebody said, oh, aren't you concerned about those people talking bad about you? Well, you've got to be kidding me, man. i got, I got angels of darkness falling, angels persecuting me. <laughs> you think I'm worried about a man? My goodness, I don't even hear that. I'm so full of compassion and love for them anyways. My goodness, they're just hurting themselves. They can't hurt me. And look, he over here. You're looking on the wrong things. You're seeing the wrong things. Your heart's in the wrong things. God's got greatness planned for you. I so believe that. I so believe that. God will increase my greatness. Huh? Does anybody know that? Did you know that was a scripture? God will increase my greatness. Hallelujah. Think about it, man. He's Look at what he's given us. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He's given us the greatest anointing that's ever been made available to humanity, to men. He's given us oneness with Himself. Father has been willing to come make His dwelling with us. Father who is shut off, separated from men. Men cannot see Him. Men cannot know Him. Suddenly, He's now able to come and make our abode, His abode with us. His dwelling with us because we love Jesus. And because we love Jesus, we obey Jesus and the Father loves us and He comes to make His dwelling. When you begin to believe that, no power, no thing is greater than that name of Jesus. There's nothing can stop you. It doesn't matter if you all by yourself in the middle of the backwoods of nowhere. You know he will increase your greatness. You know he's going to take you and he's going to set you up among the, uh, among the nations so that you can go and proclaim his word and make known his mighty power. Yes. People faint. They weary in well-doing. They get, they get their eyes on circumstances. They get their eyes on other things. They have other desires. Or they got desires alongside of Jesus and their eyes not single. I tell you right now, I have one desire. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have only one desire. I have only one thing I want. Hallelujah. My God. La satara mangdaya prataya. My, I have this passion Papa's put on the inside of me for his glorious church to be seen. And, uh, and, and that's, that's why we're going to, that's why we're, that is why I'm ferocious. Uh, that is why I'm unbending and unwavering. Somebody said, oh, you're too hard. My Papa's hard that way too. He's going to have his boast and his son. He's not going to have a mixture. Somebody said there's a mixture. God wasn't there. He don't mix with nothing. He's made a way for you and I to come into a place of holiness and purity in him. To come into the glory of his presence. There to learn how to stay. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Ha. Hallelujah. Jesus said, the Father dwells in me, and I dwell in you. Wow. Is that true? Is that true? Is that true when there's a financial crisis? Is that true when there's turmoil around you, when there's physical problems and physical pain, when there's circumstances of loved ones and situations of those who are dear to you that is hurtful and harmful? Is it true? Is God in control? Is He almighty? One of the things that so transformed uh, John Wesley's life is that they were all, all the Anglicans were down fearing for the life in the bow of the boat because it looked like they were sure that they were going to die. And then there's this group of guys up there sitting on the bow getting all soaking wet, praising the Lord. And he just stuck his head up above the, 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 the hull to get a bit of breath, fresh air, because I mean it's smelly down there when everybody's throwing up and whatnot. <laughs> everybody's sick in the hall. And he sees the Moravians. And they worship him, praise God, got a big old smile on their face. And he said, How can you be happy at a time when your life is threatened? Oh, because we don't live any longer. Jesus lives. And we in his hand, and nothing can touch us. No power can hurt us at all, lest he gives the order. 
No, no water can drown us. No fire can burn us. The flame cannot kindle upon me. <laughs> ah, as long as Father wants me in the middle of His ministry, eh, nobody can get me in hope. As long as Father has called you and purchased you and, and, and chosen you and ordained you, nobody can pluck you out. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good, ain't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I've been struggling with a sickness and disease. Quit struggling and start praising him and giving him thanks that you healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Get me read a verse, couple of verses of Scripture to you. I'd really like to read about a hundred verses. No, I got about two. No, maybe three, four hundred verses of Scripture that I'd like to read to you. And they're just beautiful Scriptures. It's about how Jesus is healing everybody. How, how He's continually casting out devils and working miracles with authority over all substance and authority over all natural and physical laws. But I'm not going to get into that tonight. We'll do that later. And then to understand that he also gave us the same authority. He gave us the same anointing, same divine ability to do his works and greater works. Hallelujah. I just love reading Matthew chapter 11, you know, and just contemplating verses 3 and 4. When John sent disciples to ask Jesus if he was Christ or should they look for another. In the self same hour, what he did was he opened the eyes of the blind. He, the crippled walk. Those who were deaf heard. Those who were diseased were cured. The dead were raised to life again at that self-same hour. I mean, if all the miracles that Jesus did, if, he, if everything that he said and did should be written out, as John said, I suppose the whole world cannot contain the books that should be written. Oh, yeah. Ah, he did far more than the miracles that I've enumerated that are there then put forth in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And he's called you and I to walk in such a heavenly realm and do the same thing. Somebody says, why? Because we don't want to see people tormented and suffering. Because we are compelled by the love of God and filled with his compassion. And we got their cure. We're not sending them the doctor. We got the cure. We don't want to see them suffering. We don't want to see them in pain. Anybody is willing to let somebody else suffer and be in pain and tormented, I'm sorry. I can't believe you got compassion. But I've been filled with the compassion of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do these things, and you can do these things too. We're in a meeting. We're in a meeting, and there was a person in a coma. And I think the person that was with me that day, watching, and uh, right now, and, you know, I, I, I love these things because there's, we, we, you know, we say things, and the reality of it is people think, could that have really happen? Did it happen that way? Yeah, it's on record. It's going on YouTube. It's... It's there, captured. Hallelujah. But at any rate, they came to me and said, do you have a doctor in your company? A woman is in a coma. I said, yes, we do have a doctor. <laughs> Where is it? I'm the doc. You the doc? Yeah. Where is she? So I went to her, and she's laying there in a coma. And I walked over, and I touched her. I said, hey, sweetie, wake up. Her eyes popped open. Her Eyeballs were going all over the place. She was really dilated. She didn't know where it was. All of a sudden, she could see. You could see her pupils focus. She could see. I said, why don't you give her something to drink? And we, we went, back, went back doing what we were doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have authority? Or do you need to get your set? You need, you need to call 911. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? Where, what do you believe? Do you believe that God is in you? Yes. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you just going to sing about Emmanuel? Or are you going to live Emmanuel? Emmanuel, God with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus made it possible. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Praise the Lord. Are you just excited about Jesus tonight? Yes. And so I, I'm so excited. Somebody said, how can you walk in divine help? Let me tell you. Stay in the realms of the anointing. Hallelujah. <laughs> stay over here in this place of praise and thanksgiving. And, and, and hey, and somebody said, you mean you, mean you, never, you never have to deal with any affliction? Many of the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord just delivers us out of them all. Many times, many times something will try to hit my body. I just tell it to go. I just learned the authority that it has to obey me. It's got to go as quick as it came. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. 
And that's not for me only. That's for all God's people. God would that you'd prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. There's divine health for you. I remember hearing in the company of the saints among those, oh, holy roller, holy ghost people that got sold out to God, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, about a man of God who was in his 80s, and he not only, he'd never been sick in his life, not only had never been sick in his life, he had his original teeth and he never had a cavity. And they said, how did, and he talked to me, he loved to talk about divine health, and now he walked in divine health. And in the one thing that he had concerning walking in divine health was that he never spoke an evil thing or an ill thing about anybody in his life. He walked in the spiritual law that resulted in the spiritual blessing. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ you'll repent right now. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. i got to cure it or erase the past. The past will be no more remembered. It will no longer be accounted to you or credited to you ever again. And from this day forward you can begin to live a life that is abundant life. A life filled with all the goodness and blessings of God. But you have to learn how to walk in the Spirit. You have to learn how to obey His laws and quit doing it your own way. Do it His way. I'm telling the atmosphere is charged with the prince of power, prince of darkness, and the power of the air is the realms of the satanic. But God has translated us in a realm called heaven, that place where the Holy Ghost has total control and charge over our life so that we can learn to walk in all the ways of God. But we've got to recognize the things that we've been taught and the stuff that people are involved in and the things that we've learned, to, uh, that, we've, that we've learned and allowed to operate in our, in our thinking. You need to stop. You need to stop. We live by the word. Amen. 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 My heart breaks when I hear people talking bad about other people. My heart breaks because it's not so much for the person they're bad talking bad about. It's for them. For them. So did you know, did you guys read in the Bible how the Lord said you're supposed to talk bad about your enemies? Did you ever hear that? <laughs> no, he said you're supposed to love your enemies and bless them. Huh? That's what he said. That's what he said. That's how you're supposed to deal with your enemies. Those are hostile to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But people go beyond that. And then they begin to talk bad about their neighbors. And the Lord said, wait a minute. I told you to love your neighbors even as yourself. And you're not going to talk bad about yourself. You're not going to run yourself down. This guy's I just want to run myself down a little bit. I'm an idiot. I mess up on everything. I mean, why well, you don't do that? You don't do that. You don't do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Break coldness out of ding la tipa and then, worse than that, then they go start running people down, talking bad about people that are of the household of faith whom the Lord Jesus said we're supposed to love even as he loved us. And they violate spiritual laws and expect that they're going to walk in this realm of manifest glory? No, not going to. Not going to. And then they do, they do worse than that. Then they go and start running people down who God has anointed to represent him with his word and as, as those who are the announcers and perfectors and builders of his church. You ain't going to get nowhere. You ain't going to get nowhere. You're going to have to stop that nonsense. You're going to have to start learning how to speak right things. Huh? The Lord says, Come, my children, hearken unto me. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and loves to see many good days? How many want to see many good days? How many want to be blessed, in other words? <laughs> Keep your tongue from evil and your lips and speak no guile. Depart from evil and pursue peace. And he's talking about relationship. He said, for the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, but his face is against them do wicked. And he's talking right there in that context about those who run other people down, speak evil of other people, and, and have broken relationships. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about those who do not pursue peace with other people. Maybe thought the, maybe thought the wicked were just those folks out there living immoral lives. I'll tell you right now, the wicked are also the people who speak God with their tongue, run other people down. Huh? Six things to the Lord. Hey, seven is abomination to him. The person that sows discord among the brethren. If there's anything that we need to see in this great revival that God has purposed to come, and I'm telling you right, it's begun in me. I'm in revival. Amen. How I'm in growth and maturity and participating with God. I'm have revival church. Somebody said, how do you have revival church? Call a fire down on it. What that do? Burns up all dead wood. Dead wood goes. People all the time thinking that they leaving the church because they don't want to be here. No, God moved you. Wind blew you away. His wind. His wind blows traffic away. It's fire burns it up. 
Huh? This is the way it is. I'm staying. In the fire and in the wind. I love the wind. I love the fire. Praise God. I'm like a tree planted by the river. I'll not be moved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Hallelujah. Praise yep. God. Bearing fruit all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear people, what God has called us to have in this love relationship has got to be foundational to who we are as the saints of God in light. Faith works by love. Wherever that love is, God's there. It's not, some, it's not some esoteric, mystical concept of love. It's a real love. It's a practical love. It's, it's love your enemies. It's love your neighbor as yourself. It's love the brethren like Jesus loved us. Come on. That's got to be in existence if a harvest is going to be kept and taught right because the Lord's going to reach the lost for the purpose of us, the purpose of us now bringing them to maturity teaching them to observe all things that he's commanded. Yep. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Uh, did, you know, did you know the Lord tells us to go make disciples out of nations? I figure the United States of America needs to become a disciple again. Hallelujah. That's the authority that they give us. I'm making Japan, I'm making Japan a disciple of the kingdom of God. I'm going to do it. God sent me there. I'm going to do it. I tell you, North Korea is mine. North Korea is mine. A woman who's prayed for North Korea all of her life, who T.L. Osborne laid her hands on when she was a young girl many years ago at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, looked at me and said, North Korea belongs to you. I said, thank you. I already knew that, but praise God. Huh? Why? Because I asked the Father. I asked the Father. Not religiously. Not experimentally, but because something of the Spirit of the living God has been birthed within my life when I was born of the Spirit, when I was born in the, to the kingdom, and their Father's will was established in me. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you about these things tonight because I want you to know God's given you the same assignment. Start claiming yourself a nation. Amen. Start claiming yourself a territory. Start claiming yourself a people. I know where it all began in my life. It began on the street corner where God told me. And somebody said, well, you didn't get much results. I'm going to tell you right now. The Lord told me to go up to that street corner and he told me to stand there and declare that anybody who wanted Jesus, he was present to save them. That's what I did. Somebody can say, oh, look at him, he's zealous. Oh, look at him, he's wild man. That's where it all begins, just obeying God. I'm just going to obey God. I'm so excited about the school of evangelism. Uh, Pastor Kelly's leading school of evangelism. He's leading one dimension of it, which also, which is uh, crusade evangelism, where we're doing crusades in the park. You want to get a part of it, you want to be a part of that. Because, I mean, the thing grew to about four or 500 people just this past summer in the park. Adam's leading the, the, the area of street evangelism, and we're going to get very focused because if we draw just a, a, a one-mile radius, there's tens of thousands of people here. We're going to saturate them Amen. with invitations to come get healed, come get saved, come get some food, yeah. come get blessed, come go on a hike, come do something. Amen. Amen. I received special anointing. I received anointing while I was away. I did. I, was, I received anointing. Because I was after, I was just saying, Lord, what is it? Time. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord let me know. <laughs> Hallelujah. That we were going to come back here. He was going to give us the resources to shake the city. And I'm looking at him. And we got 40, I think, what is it, 44,000 square foot of building space here in this building alone. I don't think there's enough rooms to do anything you can think of in the kingdom of God. There's like nine acres out there running around. I mean, we can get a lot of people out there. I mean, I'm telling you, start with the kids. I have, I have set my heart on, on, on seeing more than a thousand people processed into the kingdom of God over this next year. I'm not limited. I'm just saying more than a thousand. Amen. Hallelujah. I just remember what happened when we started going after those folks in the barrio when we had the property downtown. I mean, we just, you know what? It was just so apparent to me how that the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. 
I mean, even just from a statistical point of view, we had so many kids, we didn't have a number, enough people to manage them. But of course, you know, the Lord Jesus said that in context where he was going and healing every one of their sicknesses and their diseases, and he looked upon them as sheep scattered, having no shepherd, no one to heal them. And it was in that context in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, that he began to pray. And said, ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers. And in the next chapter, in chapter 10, verse 1, he appointed 12 to go do the same thing he did. And he's appointed me to do the same thing he did. And he's appointed you. You listen to me. Raquel, he's appointed you to do the same thing. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. People get her sit, get sit around in the house too long and get spoiled. You're not going to get spoiled to the philosophies of men. As though somehow this ain't going to happen. Huh? Because if it would have happened, it already happened for you. No! God may train you. He may prepare you for, for 30 years, maybe 50 years. Who knows? His choice. But what could you do in a day having been fully prepared for God, by God? What could you do in a year having been shaped and forged in the fires of the Holy Ghost, not adding to, not taking away, not making it up, not trying to get in some other way, but seeking His face and letting His glory and His power lead you there and take you there. Hallelujah. Not making nothing up. Amen. Amen. Watch what happens. Watch that. You think this ain't a miracle? I drove up. You know how I many you met years I've driven by that sign? Visualizing abiding place ministry on that sign. I'm telling you, 13 years. We drove up Wednesday night and saw abiding place ministry. I go, geez. You're amazing. It's just because it's not, it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with property per se. It has to do with this, this opportunity to step over into another realm of faith to reach a lost and dying world. I'm telling you, it's what the whole gospel is about. All authority Jesus said is given to me in heaven and earth. I think people believe that Jesus has authority in heaven. But I wonder how many believe he has authority in earth. Because we see government in authority, we see rich men in authority, we see famous people in authority, we see legislative power in authority, we see magistrate in authority, principalities in authority. <laughs> but Jesus said, all authority is given me in heaven and earth. Go. He said, he told me, he woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I was in the nation of Japan. He woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he said personally to me, I've read Matthew 28, 18 very, many, many times. He said personally to me, because I was agonizing. How can it be? How can this nation be in such a, a lost state? How can it be that there's no manifest power, no evidence that there's ever been, hardly evidence that there's ever been a missionary here? That there's ever been, there's very little evidence of any impact to the kingdom of God. Father, your power is far greater than this. How can it be? This nation's been being evangelized for more than 100 years. And it's been radically evangelized for more than 60. How can it be? And I agonized over it. I mean, I was, I was like, I was fighting mad. I was kicking chairs. I mean, I was mad. I was mad. I was mad. I don't get mad at people. I get mad at situations like that. I get, I get angry. I, got this, I get this anger. This indignation comes, rises up in me when I see Christians sad in the church. It's an indignation. You just have to pray for me. <laughs> Jesus had an indignation. And he took and he made a scourge to drive people out of Father's house. For the zeal of the Lord had consumed him. He had an indignation. I have an indignation when Satan's got the upper hand on people. I was angry. It was consuming me. <laughs> and I was talking harshly to the pastors around me. What's the problem here, man? And the Lord woke me up five... Because it's done in love. It's passion. What are you passionate about? What moves you? What do you get upset about? I get upset about things in the kingdom. I get upset about where I see Satan being able to do things he's not supposed to have any right to do. Where I see things being held back. 
And I know where it starts. It starts with you and me in a love relationship with Jesus Christ that nothing can get in between that. That nothing can mess with your peace and nothing can mess with your love and nothing can mess with your joy and nothing can mess with your praise. And when I see people year after year after year after year somehow capitulated, Somehow they know, no, no, have not enough authority for their own life. If you don't have enough authority for your own life, how are you going to have it on someone else's? I tell you, we freely received everything you've received from God. You can give it away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh. I was telling Raquel, I said, listen, you can lay hands. Well, the things that God has done for you, the Lord's done some great things for her. I want her to share with sometime about it. The Lord's done some great things for her. I said, listen, all you can do, anybody that's like that, you go lay hands on them. Because what God did for you, you can give it away. It's in you. It's on you. That same anointing touched you. It's there. It's present with you. What's ever happened in your life, I'm telling you right now, you can go with that. And if that's just nothing, if, and I was going to say, if that's just nothing less, but my goodness, what could be more? If it's nothing more, I mean, what could be more than salvation? Yeah. The miracle of salvation. The miracle of having met Jesus Christ. Yeah. The miracle yeah. of having stepped into this glory. You can give it. You can give it. You can give it freely. Father, thank you for the anointing. The Lord just spoke to me five o'clock in the morning and said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. For the first time, I heard earth. I heard earth in the faith realm. I heard earth in the faith realm. I heard a commission. He said, go. Ha! Huh. It's different. I've read it. I've read Matthew 28, 18. So it's a little child. I preached many times Matthew 28, 18. But I heard it in the realms of the Spirit. I was taught by God. God the Holy Ghost showed me something that human eyes and human understanding can never grab hold of. Hallelujah. He wants to show you too. And you know where he always shows us? He shows us in the midst of going, not sitting on the sofa. Amen. Amen. It's like one dear brother says, God can raise the dead and he will raise every man up from the dead. But there's one thing he cannot raise and that is a Christian off the sofa. You got to get it for yourself. How many things do you have interest in tonight? Do you have interest in this and interest in that? How much business interest? How much career interest? How much relationship interest? How much money interest? How much stuff interest? How much earthly things interest? I'm telling you right now, it'll keep you back from the most important interest. Set your affections, not on things of this earth. And earth was a very different realm for Paul than being in the world. The world is a realm, all of itself, belonging to the powers of darkness, where the prince of the power of the air reigns. Where the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life exist. But the earth is those interests of our food, of our clothes, of our own personal needs and wants and ambitions. Jesus said, take no thought for it. He said, seek the kingdom and I'll give you more than I gave Solomon. I mean, that's liber taking liberty with the translation, but listen to me, that's what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Come on now. People want to have these things, that thing, and the other thing, and just have it for what? I don't know. Thrills, fascination, entertainment. But oh, you get about the master's business. You get about doing the things that Christ Jesus purchased us to do. You get about doing those things which he himself did. You're going to have the resources of heaven manifested in your life. They'll develop in your life. Amen. One of the things we're going to do in the school of the spirit, there's going to be overlap with school of spirit, school of evangelism. One thing to do in the school of the spirit is once, once some, I feel like there's some, several number of folks that are flowing good and gifts of healing, I'm going to take them with me, okay? And everybody else is going to be students sitting there standing on the, on the sideline watching. And we're going to go out in the highways and byways and we're going to call people who are sick. We're going to knock on doors and say, is there anybody sick in the house? You want prayer? We're here. We're here. We're in a medical squad from heaven. <laughs> And then they can watch people get healed to see how the faith goes, how it works. Hey, praise God. Anybody sick here tonight? You got a disease in your body? Anybody with a disease in your body? Tonight, on Sunday night, listen, I want you to start doing this. I know it's holidays and you got other interests. No, I understand. It's holidays and there's a lot of other things going on, put it another way. And plus, it's the holidays and we just moved in the building and there's a lot of things going on. But we're going to go to a place now, Sunday night. You're going to bring in, we're going to go in the highways and the byways. We're going to compel people to come. We're going to do what Jesus said to do. 
you do what Jesus said, said to do, you're going to get Jesus' results. We go on the highways and the byways, we're going to compel them to come, that his house may be full. We're going to tell them if they're sick of disease. I'm telling you, it's hard to get Christians healed. But bring in the lost, they'll get healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, it's pretty easy to get Baptist and Presbyterian Methodist healed. It is. So long as they don't believe it's God's will for them to be sick. Then you got a stronghold. Huh? But I got the fire of the word of God burned that up real quick too. <laughs> but the Catholics, bring the Catholics. My goodness gracious. They, uh, it's like no hindrance with the Catholics. Bring the Catholics. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the place is filled with Catholics. I mean, it's easy to get Catholics healed. Man. It's easy to get a miracle for Catholics. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Sunday morning, just we're going to feel we're going to take all of evangelism efforts and it's going to be focused on bringing the lost in. And, and I, I, I know, I know that there's hundreds of thousands of children and youth in this city that would give their life to Jesus if it's, if it's properly executed. And I'm telling you, the wisdom of the Lord is here to cause us to be able to properly execute. This next week is going to be about people coming together in these various different groups, doing focus groups, touching heaven, being, having these things stirred by the Spirit of the living God in our heart and begin to talk about, here's the plan. Hallelujah. Praise God. And get right, get your sleeves rolled up. Get right in the big middle of God, uh, the things of God. You know, I, I don't think I can say this enough, but Ann and I, we were just worn out. We just got out of Nepal, and it was just, it was pretty tough accommodations in Nepal. Yeah, really very tough accommodations in Nepal. I will not, will not, will spare you the efforts of trying to describe how rough it was. But we left there and was in South Korea and we just worn out after a couple of days in South Korea because there the bed is so hard it's equal to sleeping on the co concrete floor and then all the other combinations that go along with that. And I looked at her and, and I basically had uh, muscle atrophy in my eyes. I was so tired. And she looked just about as tired. And I said, baby, I know we're worn out. Because we were worn out before we left. We were, just, we were thrashed before we left. I said, baby, I know we're tired. But we cannot run the risk of breathing out our last breath and saying we could have done more. Because I know that anybody who will go, I'm telling you, God, wear you out. No, no one will have an excuse on that day. You say, well, I didn't have the money and well, I didn't have the time. Nonsense. That's all irrelevant. Money, time. He didn't say nothing about, I have all power and authority in heaven and earth. I'll give you the money. I'll give you the time. And then once you have the money and the time, then go. He didn't say nothing about that. Hallelujah. Huh? He said, everybody who's forsaken everything to come and follow me, I'll give you everything. That's what he said. I know once again, it's a little bit loose translation. But, I mean, just for brevity, you say, forsake houses and lands, you forsake your family, I'm going to give you all of that a hundred times more. He, he said it. A hundred times more than you left. Hallelujah. Phew. Bacala satera. Why? What am I going to do with it? If I'm walking with the king, I'm going to just translate it right on over into the goods in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to begin to feel faith. Don't you let Satan steal faith from you. Don't let him steal faith. Don't let him steal excitement from you. Don't let him steal, uh, steal from you vision. Don't let him steal it. Don't let him steal it because he couldn't come. He come and try to steal it. See, this is the way Satan works. Here's how he works. He amplifies the negative things that are going on and tries through the mind of men and situations and circumstances to eclipse all the good things that God is doing. They'll be in a meeting. There'll be 30 people that are blind that are healed. And you know what Satan will do? He'll point out the 60 that didn't get healed. Oh, I'm, I'm stuck on the 30 that got their eyesight back. They were blind. And now, what, what's Satan doing? 60 didn't get, they, oh, I just, oh, I wish that there was a greater anointing. And you ain't done nothing, man. You ain't had one blind person healed. You sit on there, oh, I wish there was a greater anointing that the 60 people didn't get, that didn't get healed would be healed. You liar. Pants on fire. <laughs> you mean, you listen to the voice of the enemy stirring up strife. You just, come on, listen to me. Listen to me. People stir up strife all the time. Don't even know it. Listen. It's true. 
It's true. You know what? God's people get into a fix. There'd be 99 good things and one bad thing happened. They forget all about the 99 good things and the one big thing eclipses everything else. All I can see. They just remember that one bad thing. It's true. Think about it. Happened to you. Happened to me. Until I learned how to have authority over it. Until I learned how to not allow it to exist. God's people should be the other way around. 99 bad things happen and one good thing happens and the one good thing eclipses a whole 99. People say, how can you be so bold and confident? Because I can only see the miracle. I can only see the good thing. I can only see Jesus. I don't see devils. I don't see the wrong. I don't see, that, that I don't see the issues that would stop us. I hear the Lord saying, be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Somebody said, can't you have more tolerance for people who are pathetic? No! <laughs> Not when God has empowered them to have his strength and his power and his might. Can't you have more tolerance for people? Oh, oh, they're hurting. Somebody said, oh, you should just understand they're hurting. No, they demonized men. And I'm going to go cast the devil off of them. They demonized. Oh, no, no, they're hurting. You don't know. They've been going through a bad time. If you'd have gone through that struggle, you'd look the same. No, that ain't what it is. What you're trying to do is you're trying to bro- you do, you, you're an emissary for Satan trying to run interference with the only thing that set them free. That's right. I'm going to deal with it for what it is. That's right. I see everything in a realm of the spiritual. It's either demonic or it's heavenly. That's it. That's it. There's no neutral zone. There's no heavenly, there, there is no spiritual Switzerland. There's no neutral zone. If the, if the scripture described a neutral zone, then I would believe in one, but he, scripture doesn't describe one. <laughs> Do you understand? Satan is your enemy. He hates you. He wants to torment you. you think? He wants to afflict you. He wants to steal everything that God has purposed for your life. He wants, to, he wants to run interference with every good and perfect good. And I am his enemy. Jesus Christ, my elder brother and the captain of my salvation, came to destroy his works. And I'm on the same page. I'm in the same fight. Where are you at? The only thing, God gave the remedy for San Diego. A glorious church, not a political one. Not a one that's interested in church growth. But people are interested in the fire of God. They're interested in the power of the living God be manifested in their life. Sold out completely for Jesus Christ. Now somebody's going to accommodate some ideas of some fanciful notions of men. Huh? But take up the cross, brethren, and follow Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me read a, verse, a couple of verses of Scripture to you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me grab my bigger Bible. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. See, this book is called The Authority of the Believer. Uh, for, I mean, the Unlimited Authority of God, the authority that God has given to the believer. The only people who have any problem with this book is people who haven't done nothing. The only people who have any problem with this book, they've never done anything. They've never done anything. To impact the nations for the kingdom of God. Because as soon as you start moving in a place where you begin to impact, where you need to, you want to impact the nations, where you want to reach the lost by the multitudes, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, where you want to do what Jesus said, make disciples out of nations, then you're going to be looking for some authority. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right here. Praise God. It's been translated in Nepali, been translated in South Korean, going to Japanese. We believe in God. It's going to go right into your heart. Amen. And you're going to live it. Hallelujah. I want you to read it. I want you to get into it. I want you to grab a hold of this book. Just understand, it's the word of the Lord. It's what, the, it's what Jesus said. He's given us the authority of his name. Whatever you ask in my name. <laughs> Whatever, that's pretty unlimited, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. 
He said anyone who believes, not someone, not just some special people, not 12 disciples, not, 100, not 70, not 120 on the day of Pentecost, not those belonging to the first century church, huh? not a few elect, not a few special people, anyone that believes in me. That's how wonderful Jesus is. Anyone who believes in me, these works which I do, so you do also some greater works than these. Amen. These are the days for that. This is the dates for that. Amen. 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 And that has to begin in your life. You have to see that. You have to believe that about yourself. You got to stop believing all this propaganda and lies that Satan is telling. Listen, let me listen. The propaganda and lies that Satan tells brought down mighty angels, cherubim angels, great angels that had beheld the glory of the Father for who knows how long. Who knows how long? Maybe for trillions of years. I don't know. I don't know. Mighty angels, the mighty host, one third of them he brought down with his lies and deception. And this lies and deception still goes forth. And there's only one power that is able to overthrow that. It's the word of God. There's only one power. You, and it's voluntarily, you willingly submit to the word of God and say, I'm not believing anything else. I'm not listening to it. You think, people think just because that they've been born again, somehow they're immune to the lies of the enemy. Give me a break. The angels who never sinned, who beheld the glory of the Father, his mighty host, was overthrown by Satan's craft and trickery. Who do you think you and I are? You and I better cleave to the rock. You and I better lay hold of the word of life. You and I better tremble and fear lest the promise being left us. Come on. Huh? I cleave to him. As long as I stay in the realms of the anointing, as long as I stay walking with the Holy Ghost, I will be led and guided into all truth. As long as I stay in this realm, Satan cannot access me. And I'm telling you, the Word of God describes to us how to stay in this realm, and all disobedience is going to cause you to err from the way. I'm going to say, I'm going to, God has obedience as a place of protection. God has graced us with the power and the ability to obey, and I'm going to go with that. He gave me all strength and all power. To stand against all the wicks, powers of wickedness. Every device of Satan. He said, I give unto you all power and authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. And I mean to do it in this nation. I'm beginning with this city. Amen. Beginning with this county. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, why haven't you done it till now? Because we've been warming up. Captain of, our, captain of our salvation isn't in a hurry for nothing. He's not in a hurry. He's not anxious, not stressed. He doesn't feel any pressure at all. He's preparing. He's putting everything in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You're going to run with the fire of the Holy Ghost. You've got to run with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to run with signs, wonders, and miracles. That's what Papa's chosen for you to do. Amen. Now, wonderful. Yeah. I'd like to run quickly through John 14, 15, and 16. But because I don't have enough time. This is the last night that Jesus was with the disciples. It's John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. This is the last night that they will ever spend with him. In an earthly body. He'll be taken away this night. After he's finished 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. He'll be taken away from them and be led to judgment and crucified. And they will not spend any time with him until after he's raised up from the dead. Hallelujah. And he's telling them about a day that's about to come. A day, a new age. About to begin. In that day. That's getting ready to happen. The next day. Where he's going to be crucified and through his death destroy the power of death. Through his death he will abolish death and bring life and immortality to light. A new age that will come when he's raised up from the dead on the third day. And ascends up to the Father and pours out the Holy Ghost. 
the sacred realm that only a few men spotted across the times of humanity, the ages of humanity, received a little bit of. And when they did, they shaped the nations of the earth. Subdued nations, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the store, a sword, stopped the mouths of lions. Translated that they should not see death. Woo! Called fire down into heaven, subdued those nations. My goodness. Today, he's poured out in this new age. Unmeasurable, glorious realm of heaven. So that out of our lives should flow the expressions of God in such an unlimited way that he described them as rivers. Rivers! The Father was going to have his will. So many people say they doing the will of God, disobeying his word. I tell you, Father's going to have his will done in this earth and he wants rivers. Coming out of our belly, he's going to get his will in my life. I'm going to passionately, with everything that is within me, give myself to everything that he's described in his word. I'm going to be what he said he wanted me to be. I'm going to call you and I'm going to call everybody I possibly can to come over here into the school of the Spirit and be taught of God, learn how to walk in this realm of the Holy Ghost. In a baptismal fire of His presence where the manifest glory of heaven can be felt and realized in your life. I was sitting at my table after we ate. I was so drunk in the Holy Ghost I could hardly get up and go take a shower to get ready for church. It's a realm to live in. It's a glory that is ours. You want it, you have to participate with the Holy Ghost because you're never going to come into a deeper manifestation of love until you start participating with the Holy Ghost in love. Start hugging everybody. Start blessing and loving your enemies. Start loving your neighbor as yourself. Start loving the household of faith. And you're going to see an ever-increasing manifestation of the unlimited glory of heaven. I say you'll see an unlimited manifestation of this divine glory of heaven. People haven't known it because they want to live their life and God too. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with God in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look with me quickly in John chapter 16. About time I'm ready to start preaching, we run out of time. It's kind of like prayer meeting, you know. About time the glory starting to fall, people ready to go. Man, by the same place, place, realm of praise and worship. About the time the heavens just getting raptured away, now you may be seated. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to change this program around a little bit. You know what? We 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 designed too much of church to accommodate the people that want to go anyway. Huh? They only came for just a few minutes. Huh? We'll have to get it. We're going to have to start having church designed for the people who want to stay all night. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Begin to shine bright with the presence of heaven. Then go. My goodness, we'll see people go. Go into India. Woo. Go in Urabasata. Seek them. West Bengal. Urasata. Bhutan. Kashmir. Uh, Azerbaijan. Watch what happens. Uh, go into Orange County. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tijuana. South County. I mean, watch what takes place when heaven touches you. Amen. Because you've been willing to touch heaven. Watch what happens. First thing is you're going to get is the joy. Amen. First thing happens is you get joy. Hallelujah. You find a realm of peace that you don't want to be out of. Undisturbed peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? He's got all authority. He's here right now. Do you know Jesus is here? Jesus is here. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. He is the maker of the heavens. He's the maker of the earth. He's the maker of everything. Jesus. I just think I started seeing that in Nepal in the crusade. Watch as the signs and wonders and miracles take place. As the Hindus' lives begin to be transformed. I said, how many of you want to accept Jesus? Everybody. Everybody. Every Hindu, every, every, not one 
Not one said no. Every Hindu. Jesus is here. It's going to happen in America. The Lord took me overseas to show me what he gave me. He said, that's what's in you, man. I already put that in you. Wow, Lord, this is amazing. Yeah, we're going to do it in America, too. I know that there's been great, in, great hindrances. I know there's been great opposition. But God chose the fiery furnace of persecution. He chose it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He chose it for me. He chose it for you. My goodness, this I'm just tell you, start shining bright there. Just stand there in the fire, shining bright. Stand, don't block the die. Having faith is found under praise and honor and glory. Faith, mountain moving faith. I'm telling you, faith that changes the geographical location of things. I'm telling you, faith that changes the body, changes the, the, the nature of things, changes the lives of people. Faith! Yeah. Yeah. That speaks and signs and wonders begin to take place. Faith! That says, Lord Jesus, manifest yourself right now for the people. And it happens. Faith to cause the winds of heaven to blow and people begin to get their hair just messed up. In the <laughs> Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. What limits are there to faith? Watch what takes place. As a passionate people lay hold on a passionate God yeah. whose purpose to reveal all the fullness of his glory in the midst of their life. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Father, do it now. In Jesus' name. Do it now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name everybody be so built up in the faith they just be, they go out of this place with great demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. Knowing that anytime you say Jesus, anytime you say, this is the greatest word of knowledge that it could ever be given. Jesus died to save your soul and he's calling you at this moment to come to him and receive life. Amen. Jesus will confirm that word with a miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was in the midst of reaching the lost when he received the word of knowledge for Nathaniel. Jesus was seeking and saving that which was lost when he see, received the word of knowledge for the woman at the well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't wait for the school of the Spirit. To give you a little advertisement here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you begin to start practicing it. You get on the airplane, you sit down by someone, and you say, before you sit down before them, you're with them, you're saying, Lord, tell me who this person is. How, amen. You sit down beside them, the Lord give you a word. I sat down beside a person on a plane the other night. I said, Lord, tell me who this person is. Who is this person? Then I looked at the person and said, hey, how you doing? Give him a seat, seat belt already. I sit down, I buckle in. Spirit of the Lord said, intellectual. I turned to him and said, what school do you go to? He said, I just dropped out of Princeton. I already knew where he was at. I knew that he thought Christianity was mythical. Huh? His name is Joshua. God will give you one thing after another. Huh? Because I'm seeking the soul to see the power of hell broken. Can anything, can anything, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip was smart. Come see. Can any good thing be happening at the abiding place? Come see. I heard all this thing. Come see. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus just said a couple of things. Just said a couple of things. I saw you underneath the fig tree. He's going, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. I mean, my goodness, he's got a revelation that takes Peter like three years to get. Mark, you know, who are the knowledge? Rabbi, Master, you are the Son of God. <laughs> Jesus said, That's nothing. You're going to start seeing heaven. Open, angels ascending and descending from the Son of Man. Whew. Come on, what he wants to show us, what he wants to show us, what he wants to open up our eyes to see. Dear people, all we've got to do is want it desperately. All these things are free, but they're not cheap. God gives them liberally, but you've got to want them more than anything else in this life. You've got to hunger and thirst. It's got to be the most important. It can't be mixed with other opportunities and other passions and other interests. Father's not mixing. 
He's not going to be another idol on the shelf. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to lay hands on everybody in this place. I'm going to come by you. I want you to receive. I want you to receive. I want you to receive. I want you to receive faith that will change your circumstances and shape your life. Faith that causes you to walk in the door of opportunity that God's already opened for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this verse of scripture. I thought to just go to start laying hands on you right now. Jesus says, Hallelujah. Verse 23. In that day, you won't have to ask me anything. What? Yeah, I said, in that day, he saw sorrow filled their hearts, and they were unto me, and they had many things that they would ask him. In that day, you will not have to ask me anything. But I swear with an oath. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Ha <laughs> ha! Hallelujah. Verse 26. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I do not tell you that I will pray, the, I will pray on your behalf. Oh, St. Christopher, please make intercession for us. <laughs> I say I will not pray. I will not pray on your behalf. For the Father, listen to this. I will not pray on your behalf to the Father. Oh, Jesus, please go talk to the Father. See if the Father did this. Nothing gets done unless Papa says so. And he's given all authority to his son, Jesus. But still, Father, has, a door of a relationship has been opened up to us with the Father. A door of opportunity to come to the Father, to know the Father. Ooh. He says to you and me right here in verse 27, For the Father himself loves you, and he loves you because you have loved me. He loves you because you believe that I came from him. And that's why he's going to do whatever you ask him to do. Hallelujah. Well, but let's go ahead and add to that now. Because this is all in the same night, same conversation. Go back to John 14, 13. Because I want you to understand how many people are working on your behalf. I want you to see that all the fullness of divine power is mobilized for those who believe these things. You have to start fully living these things before you believe them. I'm going to say it again. You must start fully living these things before you'll ever fully believe them. Jesus says right here in John 14, 13, just after he got finished saying, anybody, anyone, anyone, say anyone. anyone. I am so glad that I am an anyone. I am an anyone. Hallelujah. Anyone who believes in me, this is how powerful he is, he has all authority in heaven and earth. Anyone who believes in me, the works which I do shall he do also in greater works. And one day, Jesus healing the blind, seeing death, hearing, crippled, walking the diseased, being cured. The dead being raised to life again. Right at the next verse of scripture, he says, verse 13, look what he says. Because it's the context of relationship with him. Listen to me. This doesn't happen apart from a oneness with him. A living in him and 
just more than living for him, it's a living in him. Dwelling in him and having no life that exists outside of him any more than a branch has a life existing outside of the vine. Being moved by him. Doing what you do because he said for you to do it. My response isn't going to be out of self-preservation or, or self-interest or self-defense. My response will be out of the realms of the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost dwells in me and lives in me. Jesus lives in me and has his person in me. We get to grow every year, every day, every week, every year in the dimensions to be able to come into all the fullness of that maturity of who he is. What a glorious privilege. Look at verse 13. Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. <laughs> now, he says, I don't need to do it, basically in chapter 16, because the Father's going to do it. But I'll do it too, as it were. I'll do it. Why? Because he said that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Because the Father gets glorified every time the name of Jesus produces the results that the Bible described. Every time the name of Jesus is shown to overthrow Satan in the realms of disease and sickness and death and torment. The name of Jesus is glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. What happens when you and I will no longer be willing to let the blind remain blind. The tormented remain tormented. The sick remain sick. The disease remain diseased. But we passionately go after it. Like those young people that, I, that we had out in the stadium in Nepal. Dragging people around. Dragging them, pull them out of the wheelchair. Dragging them around. Their knees getting skinned up. Dragging them around. Those feeble knees that never walked. Flopping around on the ground. Till all of a sudden they got up and started walking. And even some running. Passion, hey? Huh, you had a lot to push past here in this in this wicked generation to begin moving in that kind of faith. Because too many people live under the influence and intimidation of what somebody down the street thinks of them. I care not what people think of me, only what one Christ Jesus thinks. I live only for him. And as long as you live under the intimidation of what somebody's saying, what somebody thinks, you can't go anywhere. And that's the retaliation. Oh, they were talking bad about me. I can't believe in God. I'm crushed. I thought you loved me. And I, I, I can't imagine you let these people talk bad about me. Oh, God, send fire down out of heaven. On, you know. That's showing a wrong, a wrong spirit, a wrong interest. That's self-preservation. That's your own human identity. Get rid of it. Don't have it. Resist it. Deny yourself. Hallelujah. Watch what happens. Let Jesus live. Now what people's interest is and what people's opinions are and the, and the atmosphere where everybody's sitting there going, nothing's going to happen. And all of a sudden a miracle get, happens and everybody's interest just changes. What? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is a relationship. This is a dedication to Jesus being glorified. But that's got to begin on the way, you, the way you look at yourself when you come to church. Because if you sit in church sad and unhappy and despondent, you're not interested in Jesus being glorified, so just deal with it. You're interested in your own self being satisfied. That's it. And until that gets dealt with, you're not going to go anywhere else. Because we want to build a house before there's a foundation laid. The Lord doesn't do it that way. I live for him, for his glory, to show the beauty and the splendor of all that he's done for me. I want, I want to be a living testimony. I want my actions to be so loud that everybody's interested in what I got to say. Amen. 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 Say, I want my actions, I want my actions. To, be so loud to be so loud that everyone's interested in what I have to say. I just made a saying positive. There's a saying that says, your actions are so loud, I don't want to hear what you have to say. You know what I'm saying? You're at, I want to turn it around. You actually speak so loud, I'm interested in what you have to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, my actions are in God. My deeds are in God and the Holy Ghost. 
In other words, my fruits are in God, proof they in the Holy Ghost. Fruits of the Spirit here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mom, Jacob, what would you like? Would you like joy? Would you like peace? Huh? I have some delicious. I have some. Deli- I have some delicious meekness here. Delicious. Del- hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. We have some delightful goodness. Praise God. Ha, 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 hallelujah. My, 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 my. My God. Hallelujah. We have some faith that will fill you up to the full. Praise God. Praise the Nasatongi. Praise the Lada. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have to hand some of this out because I'm about to explode over here. That's a beautiful thing. Everything God gives us, He gives us to give it away. Uh, gives it, gives, he gives me finances to give away. We're going to give you an opportunity to give some of your finances away here in a little bit. I hope that makes you happy. Everything the Lord gives you, He gives it to you to give away. He gives he, this life, this joy, this peace. You can go and be with some really mean, irritable family members. And you can purpose in God that when you sit down by them, they're going to start feeling the joy. They're going to start feeling the glory. And then you're going to purpose to be not influenced by what the, the, what's coming out of them the spiritual atmosphere that they're creating, but you're going to choose rather to be only influenced by the spiritual atmosphere being created by the Holy Ghost. And so now you don't respond to their spiritual atmosphere of just cantankerous and grouchy and mean, don't like you. And now you start being full of kindness and interest and genuine love and concern. Ooh. Things start changing in the life. Things start changing in your life. You start giving away what God has given, and you start feeling more of the glory. Why? Why feel the pain when you can feel the glory? Huh? Why? 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 Why why feel the strife when you can feel the peace? Praise God. Why feel the hate when you can feel the love? Huh? Huh? Why feel the bad atmosphere when you can feel the goodness? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God's people, surely goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of their life. And they dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want want to go check up behind me. What's going on behind me? Goodness and mercy. (laughs) Somebody says, well, I really want this. Well, just ask the Father. Just ask the Papa. He's the Father of I'm trying really hard. Quit. (laughs) Trying really hard and just be. That's just be. That's believing. Just be. Quit trying and just be. On, you don't have to try nothing. All you do is call on the name of the Lord. He transforms you and changes you. Now so that you can be. True. So that you can live. True. Or in other words, another way to express be is to exist. Now just exist. Mm-hmm. Exist in Jesus. Ha. Ah, now just exist. Just be. Quit trying. Just be. Just exist. One day, the Lord was calling me up into a greater anointing that he had for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I was trying really hard. Oh, God. Because, I, boy, I had fashioned myself and prepared myself and trained myself in agonizing prayer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, <laughs> and, I was, and the Lord simply told me, relax. And it was one of the great breakthroughs in my life. Relax. Sounds like rest. All you that are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I'll give you the ability to relax. <laughs> to rest. Just to be, just to exist, to have it. It's done. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to agonize. Jesus did all that for us at Calvary. Praise to me, my God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me just read a couple more verses of Scripture. Now I'm going to hands on everybody. Jesus said... If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Some of you are getting happy because the faith's hitting you. Some of you are sad because you're like, ah, ah. 
because your experience is the Bible that you read. Your experience, your history is the word that you live by. Not me. Heaven and earth passed away, but not one of his words should fail. Not one. All flesh is grass, and all the glory of men is the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower of their fades away. The word of the Lord endures forever. It's proven again and again. You listen to me. Just a little over 100 years ago, about 50 people begin to cry out to God and begin to move in a greater anointing of the Holy Ghost. Today, those 50 people are turned into 600 million. What do you think is going to happen over the next 100 years? I tell you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to take 100 years. 50 people turn into 600 million. In just a little over 100 years. What's going to happen over the next 10 years? I see a great decade in God. I see a great decade in God. I'm living for a great decade in God. I'm living for a great future. I'm about to start ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. And everybody who's counted worthy to be clothed with this fine white linen going to reign with them too. I'm not living for the here and the now within the framework of what earthly temporal cares would try to impose upon me. I'm living this call, God, this heavenly vision. This heavenly vision, Paul described it when he was talking to Agrippa, giving a defense to the king Agrippa. He said, I've been given the power by Jesus Christ to turn men from Satan to God. Jesus said, all authority is given in me in heaven and earth. I'm looking for somebody to agree. Authority to turn people from Satan to God. Not asking no permissions. To open up prison doors, to unlock prison doors, to set captives free, to call them out of their bondage. To bind and break the authority of every mind-blinding spirit. Praise God. Praise God. What ever you ask in my name. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Embedded in the context of verse 15, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you love me, you'll obey me. And if you love me and if you obey me, then you will ask anything in my name. If you obey me, then these works which I do should you do also. Get to work. Hallelujah. Salkana Makate. Shikarastate. Imlande. Alamasate. We've been sowing the word of God. Some people's hearts tonight have been prepared to receive. Because the word of God went and found place and resident in your life. To make entrance for the spirit of God and the faith of God to be imparted into you in a deeper way. Other you, just come on back, we'll plow some more. How right, we got some dynamite, we'll pull out. <laughs> Hallelujah, we'll blow that thing up. Amen. We got some hammers. Ha, ha, long day to life. Holy Ghost hammers. Ishikarasai. Longraktai. Lushiperasane. Eshikonamani. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then look at me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. No more influences but the influences of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So from the Nanjaseya. Elikana Sutaraya. Now in Jesus' name. Break pull down every imagination that's unlike God. Now. Now, so that you could walk in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, seeing it Jesus' way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. I'll break the power of every oppressive thing. Everything that steal your joy. Steal the fruits and the manifestation of God. Everything that afflicts your body. Amen. Get happy. That baby needs some happiness. 
get happy, praising, giving thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Koshalakatea. Now in Jesus' name. Ilupaya. Eliza Durasai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask right now in Jesus' name. The KC understand how to rise above circumstances and situations, understand the difference between the mind of Satan and the mind of the Spirit, between her thoughts and your thoughts, in Jesus' name. Right now, I give you that power and that ability. There you go, have that. The ability to discern. The ability to know the difference between what's God and what's not God. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I ordained you to bring forth fruit, this fruit that you should have, and that your fruit should remain. Whatever you ask the Father, in my name, he'll do it. Yeah, I see the power of God shaping you, preparing you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you rise up in the authority of heaven. There's no waiting. It, and there's no wait time. Wait, the wait's over. Huh? It's go time. It's good to go to Monday. It's go time. Hallelujah. It's the go time. It's to get up and get moving time. It's go time. It's go. It's run. This is lie. Hallelujah. Both stood I. In the master day. It's the fire God comes on you. It's the fire and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Empowering you and giving you the ability, giving you an anointing that destroys yokes. Amen. That sets the captives free. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, right now in Jesus' name, I call the fire God on your life. 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 I call you. Listen, believe me. For some people, this gets rough. Because all of a sudden, things start burning up. You know what you wanted to keep. Because everything untrue begins to be manifested. Everything unlike God, everything that is out of order begins to be exposed. <laughs> you think it's just words. No, 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 no. You start calling the fire of God. I don't care who you are. You start calling for the fire of God to fall. I'm going to tell you something. It, things will happen. Praise God. And you're so happy about that, Amy. <laughs> Amen, because you're just going to live for Jesus for Amen. the rest of your life. Because you don't care about nothing else but him. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't care nothing about nothing but making heaven. Amen. <laughs> and that's all you should care anything about anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And you want to take Joshi there with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because you love him. And you want to take Caleb there with you. Uh, hallelujah. You want to take your husband there with you. Praise God. Amen. Huh? And then all of a sudden that love starts spilling over to your enemies. Starts spilling over to your neighbor. Starts spilling over to the people around you. Hallelujah. And when there's that kind of passion, you'll get results. You'll get that kind of love results. Not obligation results. Obligation doesn't get many divine results, if any. But divine love will get divine results. Fire God in Jesus' name. Fire God right here in Jesus' name. Fire God in Jesus' name. I like to suck at the animal sucker and my gut teacher can like check the animal shahara. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God hath need of thee. To say it in Elizabeth Bethan English. The kingdom of God has need of both of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Oh, isn't that good? Isn't that exciting? That's great news. It's amazing. Fire of God right here. Fire of God burning up all that Nazarene nonsense over there. <laughs> the spirit of offense so reigns in the Nazarene church. Pride, pride, par partly because Brzee so fought the tongues. He so fought tongues. He fought it. And created all kinds of strife among the Pentecostal movement. That thing's coming down in Jesus' name. Those people have been in prison coming out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Amen. God got you positioned over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Call it fire God. I tell you, you can do it. Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, Father is going to do it. You call revival, Holy Ghost revival, not some religious Nazarene nonsense, but Holy Ghost revival down on that place. I'm, Satan sets up strongholds in the midst of churches through those kinds of things. I don't want to talk about them. But there needs to be deliverance. We're praying God is going to come. Hallelujah. And it's going to come. We're going to see it happen. We're going to see the Nazarenes come to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. See a lot of other religious groups come to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for this fire. The fire of the ghost comes upon me. The fire and the glory of Jesus' ministry comes upon me. Fire of his presence. Fire is a good thing. You walk around the fire. I told the person, I said, I'm called fire God on you. He said, oh, you don't know what spirit you are. I said, no, I mean, it's a blessing. I'm not knowing. Yeah, it's a blessing. Baptism of Holy Ghost and fire, that fire. Oh, oh. Ah, ah. Fire. It's a fire of his presence. It's beautiful. It burns. Burns on the inside of you with the life of God. It's like fire shut up in your bones. It's the word of God. They're always just, just amplified in your thinking and your thoughts. Oh, what a wonderful life this is. Living in the Holy Ghost. This is what the Lord says to you. This is what he says. Are you ready? This is what the Holy Ghost says. You ready? Brace yourself. She's thinking, oh no, is it a good word or is it a bad word? Every word that God has is a good word. Amen. <laughs> God got words of life and comfort. Amen. Now, are you going to do this word? Say, yes, I am, Pastor. Yes, I am. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We don't even ask the sheep, you know, or the cattle or whatever. We just put it in them. You know what I'm saying? We don't ask for permission. <laughs> Jude, Jude, but you, beloved Brittany, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. And that's what you're going to do. So why don't you just go ahead and get started right now. Rabba ba sa ta ya la ha te. La ka shang la ka tai. Mang lang ja ka ta ka la sa pa na ne. Van na manga deira. Suta da la ba ki shak la ka ta ka ma ka la ka. Zad ya bra ba tai. People, God wants you to walk around in a place with him that the river's always flowing. We don't have to go prime the pump and watch dust come out and a couple little spurts, a little rusty water. And then, you know, and after a while we get something flow, but it's still spurts. You know, it's just little spurts and blast every once in a while. Lots of air, hot air, sulfuric air. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then finally, we just get a flow. <laughs> Come on, get with it. <laughs> we got the puffs of smoke already. Come on, let's go with the water. <laughs> now everybody's getting all upset. Aren't they? Oh, no, he's going to get me now. <laughs> my job that's my job my job I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a I'm like I'm like I'm an inspector I'm an inspector I'm in spilicato I'm a shepherd I'm a shepherd I'm a shepherd and I and I care for the flock and so we inspect you we look you over in the spirit amen and not for your bad for your good because we want you to be able to produce we want to keep you around we don't want nobody dying on us Jesus, man. There's a fire down on me. Fire. 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 The fire and Holy Ghost. Burning in your life. Fire of God right there. Fire. Fire upon Bethany, Elijah, and little guy. In Jesus' name. And little one. Hallelujah. Bacon in oven. Go rabakata ye gigi shota ha. Monje le pakate ye hast. Lo remande. Le ba heste he tosha. Fire is alahate. Hala mon shamblandai. 
Ma la di Roma, ne. Lord of the Mundane. Thank you, Jesus. Fire God. Fire God right there. Fire God upon the grams. Hallelujah. Fire. Fire God. Fire God. Fire God. Now, you don't understand. The Lord ordained me. We asked the Father whatever I want, and He'd do it. Fire God upon bread one. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a good romance. An inescapable divine power and glory of God right here on Rob's life. So, Rob's daughter says to me, Well, I want you to meet my dad, but he's hard. He's a hard case. And uh, don't, you know, he's, he's pretty tough. He's pretty rough and whatever, you know. And, you know, I said, well, why don't you invite him to church? Oh, he won't come to church. No way he'll come to church. I got out of the car, saw Rob, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord said, I'm taking him. I looked at Rob, man, man you, you're coming in the kingdom of God right now. Jesus name. Ah, no hard cases with God. Amen. Bring that container. Easy lost. Ha, ha, ha. Man. And there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of robs all over the place. I'm going to go seek and save that which is lost. That's what Jesus is doing. Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. You're going to follow Jesus and you can go seek and save that which is lost. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God for the sweetness of his presence. Amen. I'm so happy you just in a joy now, not jerking around anymore. Praise God. A woman of faith, a woman of divine power and authority that wants the will of God for her life and not her own will. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, signs and wonders, woman, miracle woman in Jesus' mighty name. Rise up in the faith of Jesus Christ and go do what God said to do as though he were doing it himself. Amen. Amen. I fire God in Jesus' name. I fire God upon the White House. Fire God upon the White House. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Praise God. Nangjele bikadashale. Lur masatai. Lur mangalistika. I speak strength and life to your body right now. Glory. Mishikara sutalaya. Mongle katai. Name lombo sopatote. Divine power and authority. Injishikula manta terase. Landambla. Okotai. Just to live for Jesus. Just to live in the realms of divine power. Just to live in a heavenly realm of, uh, of his goodness and of his grace. In Jesus' name, Belimana. Now, in Jesus' name, Leberust, fire God, right here, right upon the earlies. Fierusai, Fierusharon, fire. Amen. Everything I call the fire of God upon down upon everything of your life. Everything burns up. It's not of God. Burns down, in Jesus' name. Burns up. Burns. Burns up. Burns up. No ash even left. Burns. Fire God. The long sigh in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Now in the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Change. And I tell you, there's nothing to bring change like the fire of God. Father, thank you for the fire. Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing on my dear sister. Thank you, Father, for your fire on this hungry heart. Thank you, Father, for the fire right here in Jesus' my name. Father, thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Signs, wonders, miracles, divine authority. My goodness, you got, a, you got enough word on the inside of you to create a whole new earth. Now in the name of Jesus. Faith and authority and confidence and boldness and certainty. In Jesus' name. You're in charge. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus died and rose again to leave you and I in charge. Died, rose again, went to heaven so that you can leave us in charge. In charge. In, tr in charge. You can't be walking around doubting and wondering, sad and sorrowful and be in charge. You walk around boldly pro proclaiming like you're the one speaking out the order and everybody's got to listen. You listen to me. You listen to me. God's giving you his faith to call those things which are not as though they were. Hallelujah. God's giving you faith to move mountains. 
God's given you faith to change impossible situations. God's given you faith to rewrite the whole situation. In Jesus' name. You know, confidence and boldness, not sorrow of heart. He said, I'm going away and sorrow has filled your heart. But a new day is going to come and you're going to be full of joy because you're going to find out that everything that I have, I've given to you. <laughs> power and authority to say it. Here's how it's going to be and it'll come to pass. And be happy and glad because it's got to work out like you say. Amen. Hallelujah. Fire God right here. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. I said, fire God right here. Fire of God right here. Fire of God right here. Fire God right here, in Jesus' name. Mondo, fire God right here. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. Fire God right here, baby. Fire of God. Fire of God right here. Mon zone le cache pay. Fire of God. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire of God. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire of God right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Fire God on my dear brother's life. Fire the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm blind. Fire of God right here. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God right here. Hallelujah. Bring Joe Khan, bring Joe Shave Rase, Lord, Lord Mane, see Prusara Dande, the Pikita, Lord Stibriti, the Nangolo Bota, Ise, Lord Mamba Babata. Get to praying in the Holy Ghost. Barashala, Gaily Mingilakatoya, right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sit around and think about the problems. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in the most holy faith and everything changes. Faith changes everything. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that He is. And that is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire. 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 Fire! 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 Ah, the Holy Ghost. Fire! Upon fire! Upon this fire of God right here. Fire right here. Fire of God. Broso Pata The fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. Fire! 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 Ah! Fire! Sasadiasum! The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. 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 Of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Burning in this fire. Mount Jalap upon the Kellys. Fire. Shikai. Fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, but a satan be shakes. Tapanika. Fatus. Baha. Iliatoyo Masata. Baha. Sotoya Masika Kenny. Fire <laughs> Hello, Holy Ghost. She's a eating. Fire. Man and on. Sickness. That's no. Hold on me. Seated in heavenly places. Crushed his head at Calvary. Seated in heavenly places. Disease has no hold on me. Seated in heavenly faces. Bruise his head <laughs> at Calvary, seated in heavenly places. 
Don't you ever be sick again for the rest of your life. Don't you ever have a complaint again. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the anointing right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing to prosper. The anointing to increase, yes, more and more in God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Fire God. Fire. The fila ya romon jacara nambate. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Ha ha. Jada da na na ye shake ye ke ke ya ke ya kara kara dein. Ma na 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 ne ne. Ha 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 ha. Ma ya ye ye te. Fire. Ma jis. Ishik bronja listi. Ha. Fire God. Fire right here. Be be no sir. I call out guy, is shaved. In Jesus' name, I command that old sickness go off your body right now. Yes. I command that old sickness go off your body. Has to obey me. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> How you like that? <laughs> ha. That's right. Amen. 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 Because Jesus said so. Somebody said, why? Because Jesus said so. Now what are you going to do with that? It's because that's the way it's got to be, because Jesus said so. That's the way it's got to be. Nung duck say leaky duck a day. I command this whole fever and infection go out of your body right now. Here it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Kick out a numbo ta today. You can get up and jump around if you want. Thank you, Father. Fire God right here in this life. John left, so fire God. Right now, wherever he's at, fire. Come on in. Jesus' name. Fire. Fire God. Fire God. Fire of the Holy Spirit upon this family. See, you know what? You can't do nothing about this. I'm not asking you to receive nothing. I'm telling you what's going to happen, you see. That's what's to go on down here. And nothing about not receiving anything. I'm telling you. It's, I'm calling Papa. I'm asking Father to do something that he wants to do. It's baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. It's the fire that, he, that, he, that comes to try the works of every man to see what sort they are. Now, you see, that? You see what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you're it. Hallelujah. Fire God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Dominic, don't worry about anything. Cast all your care upon Jesus because he cares for you. Huh? Now I want you to be a, a, a radical Native American. Huh? Jumping around, dancing, shouting, hooping and hollering for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Laying hands on everything that moves. Everything that moves. Lay hands on it. From your puppy dog, everything. All the way to everybody in the church. Everybody in the school. Yeah. Yes. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God in this life, in Jesus' mighty name. Things cannot remain as they've been. Hallelujah. So grand and I saw it today. Box to kill the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in Japan, and the Spirit of the Lord said, I've given you authority to call fire then upon the church and the nation. I was very radical. And then confirmed that in a very radical way. I said, well, Lord, I want to go back home, call fire down on everybody sitting in the church. And so he gave me permission to do that. So that's what I'm doing. Fire God comes down on your life, comes down on your family. Nothing can be the same. God's rearranging everything. Hallelujah. And you're going to like it too. I, pr I promise you. It's going to be good. Huh? Might be a little bit of pain, maybe a few adjustments, maybe some big adjustments. But I'm going to tell you, it works out great in the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, fire God upon you. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Fire God right here in this life. Amen. Thank you, Father, for these mighty men who come in here and labor to keep everything going, get everything set up. My goodness, put the kingdom of God first. You know, when we were in the... Fire God comes on you, William. Now in Jesus' mighty name, you're going to stand and start prophesying. Listen, people of the generation and the age groups that Satan is attacking, who's standing in the gap for them? You know, 
Daniel was reading to me last night a statistic from off of a news thing that he gets, news alerts, that pornography focuses on 8 to 17 years old. That's what their market strategy is. 8, can you imagine those demonic powers focusing on 8 to 18? I mean, 8 to 17. Now the 8 to 17 year olds need to stand up and start prophesying. Start walking in the authority that Christ Jesus had given. Start interceding for their age groups. Amen. Amen. Change comes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You do that now. You seem to be very interested. Hallelujah. I believe you are very interested. Hallelujah. Not just to seem to be. Amen. 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 You can stand up, Lydia, into a place in God. Hallelujah. To where that you can do great and mighty things that have never even been done before. There's not even a, there's not even a, a bar set yet high enough for what God has purposed to do through men and women. Really, it isn't. We might look back upon Mariah Word with it or who set the bar, as it were. Come on! Now you rise up and you make Jesus everything that you want and you watch what happens to your life. You make Jesus everything you want and you believe everything he says and you don't do nothing else with your life. Amen. I literally believe that I can stop things that Satan would have otherwise done had I not existed. I believe the church is the hinderer of iniquity. And that those people that are within the church, if they stand up and they begin to move in Christ Jesus, the intercessor, because he was the one. He was the one who saw that there was, Father saw there was no intercessor. He's the one who then came. And by his own right hand, by his own mighty power, brought salvation. Made up the hedge. Was the restorer of the path to dwell in. He was the one who raised up the ancient ruins, the ancient dwelling places that we once had in God. And that's our ministry. That's who we are, to walk in him doing the same thing. I believe that no one can take the place that God has made available for you to walk in. How radically will you walk in it? We're going to do great things in the kingdom of God because God, Father has ordained us to do great things. We will build lasting things in the kingdom of God. And that's really what the Lord's saying in John 15, 16. He chose us and ordained us to, bring, to, to build lasting things. Bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Lasting things, whatever you ask. I started prophesying when I didn't have a dime in my pocket. When I had nothing, when I was still in school. I'm going to build things in the kingdom of God that will last till Jesus comes. And there's all kinds of circumstances and situations come try to take your vision away. Try to take your dream from you. Try to invalidate your vision. Try to invalidate your dream. I will not. I will not let my dream be invalidated. <laughs> I will not let my vision be invalidated. For the Lord gave it to me. Man can't take it from me, neither can devils. Well, devils can't take it from me, neither can men. And I'm saying that to you. Follow Jesus. Now, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. The Lord has brought us to this place and time. He's given us an opportunity. Oh, yeah, a fearful opportunity. That we will give an account for on that day. And I purpose to give an account with great boldness and gladness. That I did not hold back one part of my being from fully realizing the opportunity that is set before us this day with such a property to go up there and start building that place out. My goodness. God worked a miracle. This is a miracle. Not so that you and I can sit around in a building, but so that we had the resources to go to work. To do everything and have everything that we need to get the job done. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A miracle of faith operated by the Holy Spirit through the life of Jesus Christ, our example, and the one that we're supposed to follow. Took a few loaves and a few fish and multiplied it. That same kind of miracle will begin to multiply souls unto you. Begin to multiply resources unto you to be able to see the kingdom of God established in the lives of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in this city. I see a day in the not too distant future where the glory of God so filled the place the worship and the praise being that which is fully saturated with all that the Holy Ghost can bring signs and wonders and miracles taking place and hardly even a place or opportunity to preach or say anything people falling down in the power of Holy Ghost conviction Falling down in the presence of Jesus, surrendering their life, being made completely whole. I see the day coming where everyone will have a revelation, a psalm. Everyone will have a tongue, an interpretation of tongue. Everyone will have a working of a miracle, a gift of healing. Everyone prophesying one by one under a divine order of God, like described in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 23, I see it's going to happen. I see a glorious church functioning in the fullness of the ministry of Jesus. A glorious church that looks no different from Jesus. Somebody says, what is a church supposed to look like? Supposed to look like Jesus. What is a church service supposed to be? It's supposed to be like being in a Jesus meeting. Just like the ones you saw 2,000 years ago on the pages of the Bible. That's church. That will never happen unless there's a people who are passionate about having it. We're going to be passionate about having it. We're going to bring the lost in here on Sunday morning. We're going to bring the sick in here on Sunday night. And all the weekdays are going to be about processing the sheep and building bridges for those who come into the kingdom, no matter where they're at, helping to get to the next place in God. God has given us a divine mandate. That mandate is change. That mandate is change. We're looking at every detail of our life. My wife and I are looking at every detail in our life. Say, okay, what can we change? Change the food we eat. Change everything. Change everything. Change. Change the cell phone. Change everything. Change. Change, change, the, change, the, way you, change the way you dress. Change everything. Change. Change. Change the way you think. Start thinking like Jesus thinks about himself. You have the mind of Christ. Start thinking like he thinks. What did he think? When he was standing in the situation you're in. That's the way you're supposed to think. How do I learn how to do that? I read the word. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. I listen to the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Hallelujah. Great boldness and confidence in Jesus' name. Great boldness and confidence in Jesus' name. Everybody stand with me. Turn up a little bit. So blessed with the abiding place. The abiding place is salt in the city. It's light in the city. It has a great. heavenly divine call upon it. Jesus said, if you abide in me, you listen to me. Listen to me. This is what this church is built upon. I want you to listen to me. If you abide in me, in other words, everything that you believe about yourself, all your identity and all your purpose is about me. If you abide in me, 
You see yourself in me. Your life in me. And my word abides in you. So now that everything that you believe and everything that you think and everything that you purpose to do comes right from his word. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you will. Listen to me. And it will be done. And I ask Lord Jesus that you give me San Diego County. I ask you Lord Jesus Christ that you give me the houses of this nation, of this city, of this county, and even of this nation. Starting here together tonight, Lord, we come to you as the abiding place ministry that you called, that you named, that you purposed. Lord, we abide in you, our identity, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe we can do is all about what you've described yourself to be. And Lord, all that we think and all that we move in and all that we do comes forth from your word. Father, we thank you for many souls. We thank you, Lord, for the divine capacity to walk around in your anointing, in your presence, and communicate your love, and communicate your grace, communicate your peace, communicate your joy, communicate your comfort, communicate your goodness, communicate your divine power and authority over sickness and disease. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Rabakarananda say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You cannot tell me that the prayers of that small church in eastern Germany, pastored by Reinhard Bonke's father, did not result. In Reinhard Bonnke's ministry. You can't tell me that the prevailing prayers for the lost go unheard. You can't tell me that people who cry out to God and say, Lord, use me. Let these works and greater works be in my life. And then who are willing to go and start laying hands on the sick. Start casting out devils. Start speaking the word of life. Somehow is ignored by the Father. I tell you, it's not true. Let your hands towards heaven now. In Jesus' name, the atmosphere of your life will be, uh, will be that atmosphere created by God the Holy Ghost. And you're going to yield to it and you're going to live in it. And sorrow and torment and harassment and demonic assignments and lives of the enemy will not be able to touch you or harm you. Amen. Doubt and unbelief will not be able to overthrow your faith. But you shall walk in the light as he's in the light. You will have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go, Christ Jesus goes with you. Everything that you say becomes a part of those things that God will use to transform the lives around you. So make sure that all your words are in Him. Hallelujah. Make sure that all your actions and your deeds are in Him from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to give all of you an opportunity to have a miracle tonight of finances. If you need a big miracle of finances, then we're going to encourage you to give a big offering. Because the Lord says, if you give liberally, you reap liberally. Give generously, you reap generously. But most importantly, participate with the miracle of faith. Participate with worshiping God. Don't, listen, I want, you, I want to encourage you. 
never come to church and not worship. That would be just terrible. One of the most important parts of worship is it found in the offering and the giving. It does, it's not, the, it's not the how much you have to give. It's what the Lord gives you faith and inspires you to give out of that which you have. And every man gives according to his individual ability. As God has prospered them. And as God has blessed them. You don't have to be ashamed of whatever size the offering is. The woman only had two mites. She wasn't ashamed of her two mites. And it's an offering that be talked about forever. Because she gave not out of her abundance. But she gave out of the necessity that which she lived by. She could have given one mite, and I believe it still would have been a great offering. She just went beyond. But I want to encourage you, make sure that giving, giving in finances is a part of your worship because it does things to the inside of your heart, your life. Where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be. And there's never an offering given that doesn't become a part of your treasure in heaven. Never. Never. It doesn't matter if it's an offering of praise, an offering of prayer, an offering of finances. And you need to give in every area. And the more you give in one area, the more you give in the other. So I want you to always. David had insight. He knew how to walk with God. He said, I'll never appear before God empty-handed. He had insight. I'm going to follow his faith. Look at what it did for him. Yes. Jacob had insight. As soon as he had an encounter with God, he said, I'm going to give. I'm going to give you one-tenth of everything that I have, lest I forget. See, you're going to do all these things for me? I don't want to forget. Had insight. Look what it did for him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then furthermore, Father just told us to do it. You don't need more insight than that. Told us to give. Told us to take care of the church. He said, Paul said, if we communicate it to you in spiritual things, what is it if we reap your carnal things? Huh? You can, you can come and, and fellowship and communicate with us by your giving. And what we're just interested in is seeing God do the things that only he can do as he takes, listen to me, as he takes what you have that you give in faith, it might not be enough. But because you gave it in faith and it's all that you could give within the framework of that which God has given, Father multiplies it and makes it enough. He does over and again, over and again. Try to trace the finances of this building because there's no, of this, of this ministry. Okay? Because there's no multimillionaires among us. Yet. Yes. Yes. What Papa does is he takes everybody's faith according to their individual ability because they give with their heart. You might say, well, it's not enough. It's not much. It doesn't matter. So the Lord knows your ability. He also knows when you hold him back. And he's looking at you. Then what are you doing? He's looking at you. Are you listening to me? Can I rattle this cage a little bit? <laughs> People have seven savings accounts. They've never given a tenth of their savings account. Never. And the Father knows it. It's not blessed by Him. It's not His. It's theirs. I hope it works out for you. It ain't got to work out for you. Not on that day. Because you can say all you want, that you were go seeking first the kingdom of God and you laid down your life for the loss. You say, well, how about that bank account? Sure. What was that for? And you're going to have to fess up. Oh, well, that was for me. What were you going to do with all that? Well, well, we needed some food. We needed something to fall back on. I thought I, was gonna, I thought I was good enough to fall back on. You're not falling back anyways. Did you know that? How many of you knew you're not going to fall back? Praise God. None of us are falling back. We're running forward. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, as you're giving in the offering, tonight, as you're giving in the offering, I want you to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ that you're going to participate with Him so that faith, a supernatural faith for finances, will be so established in your life that that transition comes and Father can begin to give you abundance so you won't spend it on yourself. Because look at the proportion that you spend on yourself. Father knows that. He's, gonna, he's not going to bless you in such a way that it's going to destroy you. He's not. He's going to bless you in a way to where that it promotes you. And he knows what's going on in your heart, what's going on in your life. Father wants to take you into a place where you are continually, as it were, just a conduit for everything that he wants to bring into the church, bring in to the city, bring into the county, the nation, the world around us. Whether it's the realms of the anointing, whether it's the realms of material things or finances. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, the Jesus Koda Makadeya. Tonight, a miracle realm a faith realm in Jesus' name for every person in here. Creative ideas, businesses. Not only that, finances coming from unforeseen places. There's wealth to be inherited. Amen. And Father's looking for somebody who's going to transfer it right into the kingdom of God and instead of, instead of their bank account. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, come worship the Lord with your giving. Come worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> 